going to be a good one. Yeah. It's going to be so much fun. And we're going to be like hitting each other in the wood for a second. So you'll be, you'll be doing no, 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 no. Make sure you get it. Just slide around on the ice down. Be like, all right. Bumper cars. or so and then we started hitting traffic and Taylor got past me um, we rode together for a lap or so and then I made a mistake and lost sight of her and then Brandy caught us and she was in the mix and me and Brandy went back and forth God knows how many times and um, Brandy went down a couple times but she was sending it a little harder than I was, I was trying to ride smooth and a gear higher just to keep traction everywhere but um got the best of me and I clipped a tree last lap and Brandy passed me and then we were only a few miles from the finish there and she ended up getting me so P3 still in good contention for points so um we'll just keep trucking I don't know ma'am I just really like gummy worms that particular brand this exact brand from, uh, yeah, you can pick it up at your local gas station. <laughs> Got a good, I mean, look, it's even gluten free, free not, not that I really care, but it is gluten free. We don't really care. Between this this and, and fat free. Between this and the blue lemonade, we don't care. This is no. a free race. This is all the time. Yeah, this is a, it's definitely ongoing. Dude, you look down. What do you think, bud? Ready. Is it going to be a beautiful day or not a beautiful day? Oh, I like that. <laughs> yeah. That's the best answer I could do. That's all right. <laughs> we got, we got I was expecting the opposite. <laughs> I can't be negative. I can't no, be negative. I wasn't saying for myself. I was expecting you to say the opposite. Oh, okay. All right, so we I'm going to go with your prediction. No, okay. 
This is a white zombie right now. What? Yeah. You're pretty heavy. Me. Pretty heavy. Is yeah, it's getting me pumped up right now. Okay. You look like you're over the top of the <laughs> You know, I can't be too uh, too over the top, you know, with this slow condition. It's got to be mellow. You've got to be cruising through it. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen you wound up, but you're a mellow guy. Yeah, when the helmet's on, I get a little riled up, but... It's a heater, dude. It's a heater. You better watch out, I might punch you or something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alright, yeah. right, you have fun today. Here we, Here we go. guys down here in the Ampro Yamaha pits. You can see they're getting the bike ready for Lane Michael. Uh, Lane Michael's getting himself geared back up. Had a quick chance to speak with him for a minute. Uh, he, he's in good spirits now. Uh, just for those out there wondering, milk is a neutralizer. Mustard is a neutralizer. And I will leave it at that and send it back to you guys. <laughs> Pitches the goggles as he makes his way across the finish line and makes it two John Pintons in a row for the 114 of Josh the Freight Train Strang. Welcome back, man. Back. That would have won the post race this year. Uh, this made it eight time. This got eight time. Yeah. Absolutely. How was that? Some of it was really good, like super tacky, and some of it was just ice. Ice like frozen water, you know. Uh, it was crazy, but uh, this track was pretty good. Um, the pen section got, honestly, the pen section was probably the best. Um, I struggled this side of the track, like the first couple of miles, till we got to the pen section, then from there to like the pits, I felt good, and that's where I could get Ricky, and then he goes back up. So, yeah, it was a good, fun day. Glad it, it got deep, but I'm glad it didn't rain anymore because it was like slippery enough. I crashed like way too many times because I felt faster, but I just kept crashing. But that's part of the game. Well, first lap I was trying to cut in to insides, like because I knew that was a line. I crashed two times trying it, so I just stopped trying to take the lines because you're just you felt like you're on so slow and both tires are just ice. So it was definitely slicker than normal. But we've had a couple mothers here. Yeah. Hey, they held me together today. <laughs> 
No, man, it's a tough day. Like, track was absolutely brutal. And, uh, if you got out of the ruts, you were going to crash. Like, you couldn't ride out of the ruts because it was so slippery. But it's a good day. We did what we needed to do. We knew we had to be on the podium. I know we could have. Uh, Good now. I puked and now we're good. So <laughs> we're good. Yeah, this is my first win ever. First win ever. Yeah, and XC XC too, so I've been close a couple times, but to win it's awesome. It's it's unreal. So I couldn't be couldn't be more happy. You know, I gotta give it up to the whole Phoenix Race and Honda team, you know, they they've been behind me thick and thin, so uh, we've had some bad luck this year and now we had some really good luck, so yeah, I'm, I'm pumped. So how would you describe the heavy terrain of the track today to someone who doesn't race in the How would you describe uh, Ice. <laughs> pretty, pretty much ice and then really big holes. <laughs> That's about it. Like, there was no in between, so. All right, let's go. Here we go. Popping bottles on the GNCC podium. Bang! Get you some! There's a sticker for you. Another one for you, another one for you, and one for you. There you Some go. Some noise for your top three in the XT2. Good afternoon and welcome to round number eight of the 2022 Grand National Cross Country Racing Series presented by Specialized in AMA National Championship. We're here at the Matthews Family Farm here in Mount Morris, Pennsylvania for the Parts Unlimited Mason Dixon GNCC. I can't believe it's already round number eight and things getting a little crazy in the two wheel side of things. Ben Kelly obviously suffering the injury uh, a while back. Uh, did not race in the last round. Josh Strang comes out, grabs the win at John Penton. So can he go back to back here today? Or will the long list of hungry riders in the XC1 grab their first win of the season here? Ricky Russell coming off a second place finish. What a ride by Ricky Russell. I think that's where we expect to see Ricky moving forward, fighting for podiums. And of course, Jordan Ashburn. He's got the number three plate. He's had some podiums this year. He's had some ups and downs, though. Can he turn things around and grab his first XC1 win? The list goes on and on and on. We've got some great racing in store in the XC1 side today. No doubt about it. And, of course, you look at the uh, XC2 250 Pro Class. Cody Barnes coming off his first win of the season. Finally, I mean, a sigh of relief for Cody Barnes. No doubt about that. But he's got a slew of riders. He's got four different riders with wins this season. Of course, Mike Wachowski opening up with three. Uh, Lyndon Snodgrass has a couple of wins. Ryder Lafferty with a win. Will we see a new winner here today? Or will one of those riders get up and grab P1? We'll have to wait and see. And, of course, the FMF XC3 class. Of course, uh, a slew of riders have picked up wins there. Brody Johnson coming off uh, what was his fourth win of the season. Uh, however, just sits second in points behind Zach Hayes. Zach Hayes has been the rider of consistency, uh, has not finished off the box, but only the one win to show for it. You know he wants that, that win. Uh, however, hey, he's doing what he needs to do to get the job done. Jake Froman with a win. And, of course, you go back to uh, round number three, Dominic Morris with the win. So a lot at stake in the FMF XC3 class. The stage is set. We know what we can expect out of the riders today. What can we expect out of this track here today? We'll throw it down to Jared Bolton for the Yamaha track description.
Well, thanks a lot, Jared. Looks like we've got a great race in store for our riders here today. I'm ready to get to it. I know you folks at home are ready to get to it. We're going to take a short break, get a word from our sponsors, and when we come back, Rodney Tomlin down on the starting line with those iconic 10-second calls. have our reasons to accomplish, to work hard, we share a common goal, to be the best, keep fighting, put in the work, never take the easy way, your drive and determination fuels our passion. This Racer TV broadcast is brought to you by Specialized. Specialized Turbo E-Bikes. It's you, only faster. And by Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Get ready. Point eight, you guys are going to break off from where everybody else went. You guys are going to start going uh, further down towards the front gate, work your way around that, and then you have a uh, hill climb. Guys, if anything happens on that hill and starts bottlenecking up, if you guys look to the left, right there at the bottom of that hill, you can go out a little further, turn right. I made another hill on it last night if you haven't been out there this morning, so there's more than one option to go up that. That'll take you to the top. You'll come out in the track side to the 10. You'll be in and out of the track side all the way over to the 11-mile uh, mark. I'll come back over close to the finish line, and you guys will veer back off of that, back up into some off-camera stuff, across a little field, back down into the woods, some up and downs over to the 12. That'll uh, bring you up through the finish line, head back out in a little bit track side there, piece of woods, track side, another piece of woods over to the one-mile mark, and then you guys will uh, turn left, come up to FMF PowerPoint. You guys will head down the pro pits, and then you'll run these woods right here behind us. And you'll uh, tie back in here. So it's pretty long. We actually got a little bit more mileage out of it than we thought we could. So it's about 13-2. Uh, it should be a lot of fun. So uh, good luck. Have fun. And pay attention to those arrows. Safety first. GNCC racing, like all motorsports, can be dangerous. Racers, now that you have had an opportunity to inspect the course, have heard the race procedures and a description of the course, if you feel that either you or your machine is not prepared, then now is the time for you to withdraw for a complete refund of your entry fee, no questions asked. It is your responsibility to operate your machine in a safe manner, maintaining control at all times. 
Extreme caution is required when approaching areas with high concentrations of fans. Do not take unnecessary risks that endanger the safety of fans. You will be penalized for reckless racing. Race fans, crew members, and family members. Due to the nature of GNCC racing, there is no fence barrier around the race course. It is your responsibility to keep yourself and your children a safe distance from the race course. Never turn your back on oncoming racers. Use extreme caution when crossing the race course. And remember, stay off the track. For the safety of everyone, unauthorized drones are prohibited and may be confiscated. And finally, unauthorized pit vehicles are prohibited and may be confiscated. Absolutely no pit vehicles permitted in the woods or on the racetrack. And now, ladies and gentlemen, with a word from the Home Office, our Director of Operations, Mr. Tim Cotter. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Mason-Dixon, right across the street from High Point Raceway, where we will celebrate 50 years of motocross here just in a couple of weeks. We hope you'll come and join us. Uh, over at High Point Raceway for the National. In fact, if you have an interest in being a team member for us on that weekend, uh, we have many openings over there, so we can use your help uh, if you want to come to the National and be a part of the MX Sports team. We'd appreciate that. Uh, let's talk about Snowshoe briefly. Uh, Snowshoe is all pretty much the same. Uh, however, the mountain, Snowshoe Mountain Resort, uh, has a camping fee this year. It will be a $50 fee for the weekend, uh, and you will pay that at the bottom of the mountain. Just uh, plan for that. No, you'll have to buy that $50 camping voucher if you are staying in your camper at Snowshoe. Uh, other than that, I think everything is the same at Snowshoe. We look forward uh, to getting through Snowshoe and into our summer break. Uh, so it's going to be a good Good day today, and we hope we'll have a good weekend up at Snowshoe. With that, uh, I think we are ready for Ricky Towery to get us in an attitude of prayer as we get ready for our afternoon race. Ricky. Thank you, Tim. Hey, let's go to the Lord and let's have a word of prayer together this afternoon. Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you for bringing us all together safely to such a beautiful place. You bless us with a beautiful day. Lord, we just ask you will watch over these riders this afternoon. Keep them safe. Let them go out there and have a good time together. Once again, continue to watch over our military men and women in all places of the world, watching over so we can be free to come out here and do what we love doing. Be with our leaders each and every day at the high level and the local level, that they will make the right decisions for our country each and every day. Lord, we thank you for this landowner for letting us use this piece of property to enjoy our sport. We have a special prayer request today. We ask you to be with Kayla and Jared Bolton. Her father passed away yesterday. Be with that family that they may find some comfort through you in the days to come. Be with that family each and every day. Lord, we just thank you for being in control of everything. We've had so much fun already this weekend. We just ask that you let us have a few more hours this afternoon and then take us all home safely so we can get back together again one day in Christ's name we pray amen and now ladies and gentlemen if you would please rise stand at attention remove those caps and cross those hearts as we honor the greatest nation in the world with the playing of our national anthem oh say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hailed At the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight For the ramparts we so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still Stars. 
spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free. And Well, there you go, folks. Our stage nearly set. Just a few more orders of business before we're ready to go racing. And our next order is, well, to introduce to you our starting lineup for this, the Parts Unlimited Mason Dixon GNCC. Riders going to the line today in accordance to points to the first seven rounds of GNCC racing. And it's been a crazy one so far this year, but here's how it all stacks up today. He is second in points, rolling to the line first today, riding aboard the number three from Livingston, Tennessee. Out of Magna One Motorsports, power to help Sparta, Jordan Ashburn. He is third in points, rolling to the line next aboard the 739 from Morganton, North Carolina. Rockstar Energy Factory Husqvarna, Trevor Bollinger. Rolling to the line next today, he is fourth in points, riding aboard the 342 from Morgantown, Pennsylvania. On the Rockstar Energy Factory Husqvarna, Greg DeLong. the number 206. He hails from Winstead, Connecticut on the MMF Factory Racing KTM, Josh Toe. He's back, he's fresh, and he's ready aboard the 114 from Australia by way of Denver, North Carolina on the Babbitt's Online Monster Energy Kawasaki, the freight train, Josh Strange. Next aboard the number 314 from Honey Path, South Carolina on the Red Motorsports Gas Gas. The Grizzly. Brad Baylor. Riding aboard the number 212 from Duval, Washington. On the Coastal Gas Gas, he's rough, he's rowdy, Ricky Russell. And last and certainly not least, your defending Sprint Enduro champion aboard the 528 out of West Virginia on an Ampro Yamaha, Lane Michael. And that, ladies and gentlemen, your starting lineup for the XC1 Pro Class. A little light on the number side after a crazy year, no doubt about it. But right now, our final choice is being made by these riders on the starting line right now. And as they make their final choices, it's time for us to clear this starting line. And as Hilo makes his way off the stage and climbs aboard the trusty Yamaha R-Max 1000, we ask our good friend DJ Elo, remove the meat. That's right, the Monster Energy Activation Transport, a.k.a. the meat, making its way off the starting line now as we are as we are finding ourselves now ready to go racing here on the Mason-Dixon line. These riders will be traversing trails in both the state of Pennsylvania as well as West Virginia. It's an order that these riders have enjoyed so much racing here at the Matthews Family Farms for so many years. A little late start on this morning's race, a heavy turnout, and late uh, riders getting signed up this morning, so it kind of threw us a few minutes behind. But, uh, wow, track crew and all of the teams here in the GNCC Racing Nation have done a great job of getting everything ready to go. We are waiting on the final few fixes and uh, tweaks to get this day up and rolling as we watch Ricky Cowery up there in turn number one right now, my friends. And 
The day obviously is uh, certainly turning out to be a beautiful and perfectly, uh, well, perfect spring temperatures, early summer, if you want to call it that, my friends, as we got a lot of blue skies out here today and, of course, lots of sunshine. Temperatures in those, uh, well, right around the 80-degree mark here this afternoon, so you couldn't ask for more perfect than what we are faced with here today at Matthews Farms. And, folks, don't forget, as we wait here for a few moments coming up, just a couple of weeks, we'll be right next door at High Point Raceway as the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross National comes to town and we'll get a chance to see some more great stars, the best in the business and the best in the world right here in these hills that we play in today. So waiting for the final word, Ricky Tower, he said a few moments ago we'd be somewhere around four minutes or so. We are getting closer and closer to that counting down to zero. I know it's a lot of anticipation and oftentimes can play games with these riders on the starting line as they wait so patiently for this race day to get up and rolling. The questions that they have themselves, let alone the questions as we as race fans have, wondering what this day is gonna turn out like. Will we see a day of new history being written? Will we see something that we're expecting? Well, I can tell you right now, the way the 2022 GNCC season is gone, do not expect anything except the unexpected because it's gonna be a good one, folks. And it only gets better as we roll through 2022. This is round eight of a 13 round series as we roll into the second half of this championship season. Just a quick note for those of you just tuning in. Well, it's been a crazy when we lost uh, in the first round three riders right off the bat and three contenders for the championships. And then just a few weeks ago, we lost our points leader at a national enduro. And he's been out for a couple weeks. But one thing to point out, he did have a pretty good points lead. So a little bit of a buffer zone. He's just hoping to heal up in time to get back from after the summer break. Ben Kelly, I know a lot of folks are watching him, waiting to see what happens to him. And he today, sitting on the edge of his seats, watching Racer TV, wondering what will unfold in the GNCC Racing Nation today. everybody for making their way out again here this weekend and to all you folks tuning in on racer tv make sure you're sharing along the worldwide worldwide web and of course let them know that racer tv is going live and one of the most exciting parts of the race is about to take place right now just got the word we're waiting just to make sure those final few riders have made their way off the racetrack from this morning's race a couple of riders coming in right at the checker flagger just before so Garrett Bolton right now is making his way around, and as soon as they have crossed that finish line, we will be ready to go as these riders are all wrecked and ready to rock here today. <laughs> Folks, I tell you, one thing that uh, we can remind you as well, want to make sure you go home today with the great memories. Make sure you stop up and see our friends at Moto Tees today, the official event souvenir supplier, bringing you hats, t-shirts, event hoodies, pins, patches, and a whole lot more. And of course, they're located right up there on Vendors Road. For those of you at home that would like to share in some of the great memories here, at the Mason Dixon GNCC you can go online to mototees.com and check out a lot of the great things that they have and maybe even personalize your own attire there through Moto Tees. Uh, definitely a challenging racetrack today during course description and Ryan Eccles letting us know they worked this one out. 13.2 miles of racing and a little bit of a surprise to them that they didn't realize that it was getting to be that long but also a pleasant surprise knowing these riders will have plenty of time to get things sorted out and give us the greatest race possible here today on the Mason-Dixon line. 
once again waiting on those final couple of riders to check in from this morning's battle. That's what we love about GNCC. You've got the guts to do it. We'll give you the stage to do it upon. And folks, don't forget our next round coming up at Snowshoe Mountain Resort. If you haven't got your reservations, make sure you do contact the folks at Snowshoe. Get that taken care of. And as uh, Tim Connor was telling us a little bit ago, camping will be available. It's $50 per, v, uh, $50 per unit. So if you're one of those folks that like to camp trackside, that's a perfect opportunity for you to enjoy all the great things that take place there on the Snowshoe Mountain. I'll let you folks know the specialized EMTB GNCC will be returning for that round as well. If you haven't had a chance to catch up with EMTB GNCC racing, do yourself a favor and uh, make sure you're around on Saturday evenings around 5 o'clock as we wave that green flag for electric mountain bike racing, a new form of GNCC racing that is taking a strong hold here and of course, creating some great uh, opportunities for race fans to enjoy wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing as these guys literally go at it man-to-man. -man. Who's got the most power? Who's gonna stick it out the longest? And who can keep their wits about them over the course of one hour of some of the most intense physical demands that they will find in a woods race, and that's EMTB GNCC Racing only here in the Grand National Cross Country Championship Series. Still waiting, and the anticipation still builds. Tell you what, we are less than a mile out, so that you translates probably about three minutes or so. And that'll give me a chance to talk to maybe one or two folks down here on the starting line. As we'll start with this guy right here, Magda One Motorsports rider Jordan Ashburn, who currently sets number two in the point standings right now. Jordan, I know, man, this has been a crazy season, but one thing that uh, we can say about you, it's been a steady and true season for you so far, man. Yeah, you know, that's my goal is just to come out here every week and just be consistent and uh, just land on the box. Land on the box. And I know landing on the box is something that you and I have been talking a little bit about this weekend. And, of course, uh, uh, pre-race, I know uh, with this one coming into it, uh, uh, again, you know, we're a little down on numbers on the front row, but the competition really seems to have stepped up. And I don't know if that's because of that or what. Yeah, everybody's hungry right now, and everybody's riding so good. Everybody wants to be there, so, I mean, week in, week out, it's going to be a... It's going to be a battle to get through the podium and uh, especially hunting for that win. Well, Jordan, I know a lot of people are, are counting on you, man, and looking for you today. So good luck to you, brother. All right, Jordan Ashburn down here as well. The 114, Josh Strang. And Josh, I tell you, man, you've had yourself, I would say, a good season, but not so good season at the same time, man. I mean, it's kind of bittersweet, but uh, definitely a memorable one, no doubt. Yeah, the uh, three races that I've been uh, pleased have been really good. So, uh, yeah, it's a uh, bummer about the arm, but coming back, trying to get healthy and uh, here today, so uh, we'll, we'll give it a go. So how are you feeling today? You feeling strong and ready to rock again? Yeah, not too bad. Like I said, uh, I'm still got some dealing with the, the track here today. It's soft. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and have some fun, uh, you know, and when I have fun, I tend to do good. So I had a block a few weeks ago at the venue, and uh, uh, for me, that race was fairly easy. So like I said, I had a block there, and uh, looking, looking forward to doing the same thing here today. Good luck to you, Freight Train, Josh Strang. One of the guys we want to talk to, probably one of the guys that might be a fan favorite around this area. And, of course, we're talking about Craig DeLong. Craig, it's been a crazy step up to a new season for you man and uh wild things i know that you probably carried a lot of weight on your shoulders for the team this year being a rookie and everything but i gotta say you've done a good job of carrying that weight brother i've been trying my best that's for sure and uh it's been a fun uh xc1 you know rookie year so uh just trying to learn as much as i can and stay up front and battle with these guys so uh i still have a lot to learn and uh just trying to make the best of it. You know, a lot of people talk about that curve, that step up from row two to row one. Is it as big as what you thought it would be? Uh, yeah. It's, uh, it's 
been it's been a big uh, a big jump, just a little bit different. It's you know it's some things that are different and some things that are the same. So it's just trying to find those things and, and figure it out and then improve on it. So it's been uh, it's been fun. Well, it's going to be fun watching it all unfold here for you today. Getting some word that we are getting closer and closer to the green flag waving and GNCC racing underway here. So we'll turn our attention up towards Ricky Towery as we'll begin to wait and see what kind of signals he will give us and when we will be ready to go GNCC racing here to Matthews Farm for this Parks Unlimited Mason Dixon GNCC. Fire them up, guys. Fire them up. We are now less than two minutes away. folks we are geared up and ready to go as Ricky Towery has found his place behind that first turn and we know when he steps out next time the orders and the commands and signals that he will give us will definitely be one of a serious note as Ricky Towery checks one final time are all systems go and all systems are go and Ricky Towery makes his way out ready to signal these riders and let them know the start sequence is underway. One minute, one minute before the start of this GNCC, my friends. And now, we thought it was anxiety a few moments ago. This is where the butterflies really begin to roll. Next signal will see is that blue flag, a dead engine call, and 30 seconds before the start of the race. There it is, folks. Shut them down, shut them down, shut them down, shut them down. We are now less than 30 seconds away from going racing, and I got to ask you, race fans, are you ready to go GNCC racing? <laughs> Yeah, pretty good for a small crowd here today, but I think we got more. We, are again, are in the heart of the GNCC Racing Nation, so I'm going to ask you one more time. Are you ready to go GNCC Racing? Ten seconds. And row number one, the XC1 Pro will be off and rolling at the Parts Unlimited Mason Dixon GNCC. Ricky Russell right off the inside rail, but he's going to get pinched off. Or will he? Here come the outside. It's John. No, it's the Intimidator. The 739 of Trevor Bollinger taking the early lead as we go to row two now. Ryder Lafferty, Benjamin Herrera, Angus Riordan, Vincent Smith, Cody Barnes, Mason Simmons, Lyndon Snodgrass. Also Liam Draper, Joshua to Michael Wachowski, Hunter Bush, Evan Smith, Ben Nelko. Two! Seconds. Rui Barbosa, Simon Johnson, and Jonathan Johnson. One ninety-eight. Teeley Energy Racing. Liam Draper grabbing the early lead in this one and picking up the whole shot ward for the XC2. FMF XC3, 125 Pro-Am. Coming up next, Brody Johnson, Brendan Poling, Dominic Morris, Eli Chillers, Max Fernandez, Dakota DeVore, Zachary Garris, Jason Lipskin, Zach Hayes, Hunter Neuwirth, and Jake Froman in 10 seconds. Three ninety-three. Eli Childers got a great jump, but uh oh, he gets benched out. It's a one-five-six. Actually, the five twenty-six, I believe, of Dakota Devore. As we'll go to the two fifty-eight class coming up next. Cooper Jones, Trevor Getz, Zach Davidson, Nathaniel Tasha. Ten seconds. Jason Tino, Gavin Simon, Philip Dagnes, Benjamin Wright, Bolton B. Roth. Sebastian Terburn, Tanner Collins, Mike DeLosa, Dylan Carano, Jacob Katz, Trevor Maley, and Grant Davis. Little put dab on the inside, but it's going to be 
the 226. Jason Tino from Phillipsburg, New Jersey on a KTM back. KTM back by Hanover Sports Works Enduro as well. He's a Works Enduro rider, I guess, as we go to the Open A class in 10 seconds. Neil Inman, Tanner Whipple, Ezra Prine, Lucas Hole, Huck Jenkins, Dylan De La Cruz, Tyler Mann, Nathan Rector, El Ethan Waddell, Cole Whitmer, Mac Reimer, Thomas Mann, Joshua Ellis, and Jeremy Lanthier. It's the number 40, Tanner Whipple out of Kelowna, Illinois, on a Moto Armory, Babbitts Motorsports, WFO Power Sports back ride. As we go to the four-stroke A lights class next, 17 riders set and ready to roll in 10 seconds. Nathan Delaney, Ty Ely, Sam Hall, Colton Shields, Levi Elliott, Lance Machino, Chase Landers, Russell Smith, Matthew Hollenbeck, Mitchell Owen, Matthew Davis, Cole Forbes, Lane Whitmer, Samuel Goins, Blaston Moore, Zach Murphy, and Jack Joy. Whoa! What was that? 364, maybe? 264? 254? No, that was 164. Lance Machino from North Vernon, Indiana, Lucas Oil, Westfield Power Sports, and Team Green Kawasaki back ride. 158 coming up next in 10 seconds. Caleb Baltimore, Toby Cleveland, Brady Weimer, Cameron Madison, and Jack Walker. Cameron Madison, Rice City, Missouri. Good jump off the line. And as he comes out of that first turn, he's got command. He's got control into turn two. Madison taking the early lead in this one as we go to the senior A, 40-plus class. Coming up next, 10 riders in this one. Joe Marsh, Frank Messina, also shotgun Sean Remington, Joe Dean, Vinny Tomic, Wes Morris. Chad Montgomery, Clark Munger, Larry Sylvia, and Darren Darmos in 10. Shotgun, Sean Remington on the coastal gas, gas ride, grabbing gears in the early lead as he takes it through. Oh, he swings out wide. He leaves the door open and three go by. The Junior 8 25 plus class coming up next. 10 seconds. Joseph McCarty, Aram Moffitt, Jonathan Harker, Andy Sibbles, Billy Kibler, Matt Servan, Justin Leonard, Brady Myers, Andrew Boggs, and Braden Moore. Brady Myers, oh, he gets pinched off on the inside. A good run up on the inside, though, but it's going to be the 410 of Andy Sibbles out of Duncansville, Pennsylvania, and Ace Autos Roundhouse Power Sports LS2 Helmets backed ride. As we go to the vet, a 30-plus class, 11 riders in 10 seconds. Danny Hampel, Joshua Wyatt, Matt Swords, Josh Seto, Nate Crunk, Michael Funk, Derek Heisler, Nicholas Haftel, James Bauer, Robbie Norwood, and Tom Truxell. Oh, Danny Haftel does it. Oh, no, he's going to get squeezed out there. 801 Tom Truxell, I believe, out of Barona, Pennsylvania. Gonna grab that one as we get to the 250B class coming up next. Andrew Inman, Chandler Taylor, Tyler Shields. 10 seconds. Caleb Lane, Ty Atkinson, Hunter Sutton, Jay Kinder, Dakota Laskowski, Casey Walsh, Matthew Pickens, Jaden Wilson, Caleb Hines, Robert Rosinski. Colby Kimbrew, Michael Horwat, Caden Sims, and Robert Dillahay. 4-1-1, the 4 one, one is Caleb Hines from McMinnville, Tennessee on a Halen Hines Nursery. Hines Construction, Dunlop, Tireback, KTM. Open B class coming up next. 10 seconds. Dilling Fleming, Ryan Heimick. Jacob Lesko, Christian Urban, Kyle Nye, also John Wood, Isaac Prunty, Kyle Szymanski, Cody Reese, Robbie Archer, Jacob Maynard, and Matthew McCormick. Oh, 
420. John Wood out of East Sparta, Ohio on Aurorx R&R Cycle Repair. Petrarca Arbor Care back drive. Four stroke B lights. Ten seconds. Landon Beatty, Caden Ruse, Tom Allen, Justin Frams, Brian Kubix, Rayleigh Messer, Todd Fouts, Landon Hamilton, Nicholas Thompson, Wade Tucker, Dakota Cunningham, Lane Morris, Brock Belso, Maverick Cody, Trenton Holt, Preston Horton, and Hunter Hurst. Oh. 6 10, Maverick Cody from Marietta, South Carolina. KTM rider. You got the shot, Maverick. 150B coming up next. Carter Wendland, Ethan Dingle, Trevor Golden, Tommy Nagai, and also Ryan Richards. Kaysden Click. 10 seconds. Seeing Conry, Sean Zierden, Andrew Seegers, Patrick Callahan, Owen Barnes, and Ryan Gribben. I don't know if that's Cian or Cyan or Sean, maybe, but. Ooh, 161 on the. Uh, see who is that? Nope, it's going to be somebody totally different. 536. Andrew Seegers from Sumter, South Carolina. Seegers Racing KTM and Moose Racing back, right? Senior B class coming up next. Adam Nastic, Cody Hosta, Ernie Martin, Matthew Yukovic. Ten seconds. Judy Palomero, Matt Stotler, Joselton Ramos, Mike Swartz, Dave Yuglas, Benjamin Fordowski, and Brent Maynard. All them Maynard boys from out of West Virginia. Near out Wayne. Oh, 150, though, gets the whole shot. Adam Nastic from Garfield Heights, Ohio. Action Extreme Sports, Point View Cycles, and RM, Rocky Mountain ATVMC.com sponsored, right? And Junior B 25 plus class coming up next with Benjamin Fricks, Bobby Shaw, Tyler Costner, Stephen Costner, Joshua Vitale, Jamie Spray, Brandon Einsbarth. Seconds. Ryan Miller, Matt Bruffy, Zane, Zane Clevenger, Derek Orbash, Andrew Tinker, Casey Munger, Tyler Correll, Taylor Myers, Colton Hawk, John Bottomy, Billy Saliga, Brandon Farmer, and Ben Wade. It's the triple nickels, five, five, five of Colton Hawk from Petersburg, West Virginia on the Tri-County Yamaha, backed by Western Power Sports and Tucker Rocky. And our vet B class coming up next. 10 seconds. Adam O'Dell, Brian Resotarski, Larry Hopper, Scott Harper, Julio Libiata, Nick Plank, Darren Bish, Adam Glass, Brian Flowers, Ryan Ford, Doug Hughes, Louis Pina, Jimmy Bechter, also Ben O'Dell, Dustin Moffat, Sasha DeJurek, and Eric Kettering. The 312. Julio Libiana from Westboro, Massachusetts, Manchester KTM, Husqvarna Honda, and also Marble and Granite Pros, as well as Drell's Moto FX. And folks, that's gonna wrap things up as far as our start. It's concerned here at the Parks Unlimited Mason Dixon GNCC. And again, a perfect day to go racing. And uh, we've got the call coming for you for the next three hours, my friends. So stay tuned right here. Who's going to hang on to this one or who's going to come out on top of this? And we'll, we have a new winner that's never won before. Can Jordan Ashburn pull this one out today? Stick around to find out. GNCC Live continues after this. our reasons to accomplish to work hard no! 
We share a common goal to be the best. Keep fighting, put in the work, never take the easy way. Your drive and determination fuels our passion. Born of family values and a homegrown work ethic, Kemetic Gasket seals your machine so you can focus on the finish line. Kemetic Gaskets are the competitive standard for racers who demand the very best. Kemetic Gaskets are constructed from superior materials designed to perform in the most demanding environment. Whether it's championships on the line or a day in the dirt with friends, professionals and enthusiasts depend on Kemetic. Kemetic Gaskets sealing championships since 1989. Amsoil runs on freedom and has since 1972. We punish our products firsthand in our world-class laboratories and beyond because some things can't be learned from a test tube. Run with us. Ben Kelly here, 2021 GNCC champion. Subscribe to Racer X and get yourself a fresh FMF t-shirt. This Racer TV broadcast is brought to you by Specialized. Specialized Turbo E-Bikes. It's you, only faster. And by Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Get ready. And welcome back to GNCC Live. Mikey Wayne's here alongside the Johnny G, Johnny Gallagher. And you guys have already heard from our colleague Rodney Tomlin down in the starting line with those iconic 10-second calls. This is round number eight, the Parts Unlimited Mason Dixon GNCC here in Mount Morris, PA, the Matthews Family Farm, if you will. We're looking at mile marker number one right now, the FMF PowerPoint. If you're just tuning in, We'll get you restarted or recapped here with our specialized start recaps. The XC1, the XC2, and the XC3. So we take a look here. The XC1, row number one, off and rolling. And a man who, hey, a lot of debate. Who's going to go out there and win today? Can Strang pick up a back-to-back -back win? Right now, the man out in front, that's 739 Rockstar Husky, uh, Trevor Bollinger. A little checkup from the neck up right there. But, boy, good start for Toth. Banging bars with Lane Michael. Good to see. And uh, good start for Ricky Russell as well out of that XC1 class. 
As we are off to the races right there, everybody wants to pick up a win with obviously the absence of uh, Ben Kelly uh, again here this weekend. We take a look now, the XC2 class. And I believe it is a 198 Tele Energy KTM of Liam Draper. Good drive and snags the whole shot right here. Mike Wikowski right there with him in that two spot. Taking a little dust, but uh, boy, things shaping up there in the XC2. We'll see what Cody Barnes got stored today uh, for these guys as well. Coming off uh, a great uh, race just a couple of weeks ago at the John Petten. But boy, good start for Liam Draper coming off a, uh, I believe, the podium finish. And another guy wants a win. XC3, FMF XC3, the 125 class. I think this one was Dakota DeVore, if I'm not mistaken. But the 125 singing the song of our people as I put it, but uh, boy, good drive there by Dakota DeVore. I thought it was going to be the 490 of Max Fernandez for a minute, but the 156 sneaking in there. Dakota DeVore grabbing that whole shot. So there you go. A little start recap for you out of the FMF XC3, the XC2, and of course, row number one, our XC1 class. As these guys heads up, head off into the woods here, and uh, I believe we'll take a look now at our Yamaha Racing track map and get an idea of what our riders will face here at the Mason Dixon. And this is something, Johnny Gallagher, I'll throw it to you, man. You can speak more to this. You wrote this, you raced this yesterday. Yeah, and really, honestly, uh, we've raced here for a long time, but this year's uh, 2020 edition of the Parks Unlimited Mason Dixon GNCC top notch. The track layout, amazing. Uh, they actually found some new ground here, or made some new ground here that okay. we're running, uh, and the track conditions could not be better. That heavy, heavy rain that we got on Thursday, basically it was nature's water truck, prepped this soil perfectly, and uh, you couldn't have asked for better conditions, but a lot of uh, diversity in the in the track this weekend um you know a lot of the tracks that we've been running due to the fact that we need so much room for parking we just haven't had the fields here this weekend the track crew did a great job of mixing in some open sections and it's not just one big open section okay. all at once so you're kind of in the yep. woods as you can see you're in the woods you're in a field you're in the woods you're in a field so it's a great mix of you know some tighter technical stuff i know they've also thrown in a bike only section which the afternoon will be running today and I've heard there's a pretty gnarly little hill climb in there. Oh, so yeah. we'll see uh, We'll see how that pans out. Uh, obviously, the Penton section playing a big big role in our last race. This would be not quite as long as that section. But, yeah, it's, uh, I believe, showing as a 12-mile course. But from what we're told, 13.1 okay. miles is what they actually clocked it at for this afternoon race. This will be the longest race or the longest track of the weekend at 13 plus miles and uh, it's going to offer some really dynamic racing a lot of opportunities to pass uh, throttle control is going to be key although the moisture is great as you can see out in the fields here a lot of dust going to be kicking up because the sun's been baking oh, the wind's yeah. been blowing things are really drying out in the open stuff and then in the woods man it's as, as great as this dirt is there's some sections that'll catch you off guard there's just some slick obviously old strip mine ground so there's yep. places uh we're not in indiana anymore folks <laughs> we, we, we don't have that beautiful indiana dirt we uh we're here in Pennsylvania. We got some rock. <laughs> it happens. That, that is for sure. Uh, Walker Fowler got a little dose of that yesterday there on Pro Row. If you guys didn't catch that, pretty gnarly get off there. He's okay. He was fine. Ended up taking P2. But, yeah, uh, definitely an interesting race course, to say the least. Uh, right now, as you can see, watching Racer TV, waiting on those leaders. See how things are sorting out here in the XC1. Of course, uh, if you did not know, of course, Ben Kelly, who opened up the first six rounds of racing with a win uh, in all six rounds, did not uh, suffered an injury and not sure on the timeline of when to expect Ben Kelly back. But it will be after at the very least after summer break. But, uh, you know, Ben Kelly wants to be out there. Sure. But he's probably watching, thinking, hey, I'm doing OK. I still have a shot in this thing. I just got to get back on the bike before the end of the year. Um, that has opened up the window of opportunity for the guys that did line up. Uh, that being Josh Strang picking up a win a couple of weeks back um, at uh, the John Penton. And uh, I got to think if, you know, obviously Strang wants him to get another win. But if you're one of those other guys, this is your opportunity right now, Johnny. Sure. And we've talked about this before, obviously, going back to 2021 last year. Uh, Caleb Russell retires. It kind of leaves the de facto yeah. leader, you know, powerhouse of the class out. Um, not that those guys just kind of not that they gave it to Caleb, but oh, when you win sure. that much and that many times in a row, it kind of just becomes almost what's expected. And when you interject that excitement of new guys winning in, it makes all those other guys think like, well, hey, man, he got his first win. I yeah. want mine kind of a thing. I want a shot at this championship. And honestly, I think we were expecting to see a lot of that coming into 2022, even though Ben Kelly won the championship last year. Obviously, it was a knockdown drag out fight right to the end between him and Stu Baylor. Uh, and then it was like Ben just came out stamped the 2022 oh, season as his from round one 
obviously with his departure after his injury uh, a few weeks ago at the National Enduro, it kind of opens up that same scenario again of these guys that were almost coming to the races knowing that they were kind of racing for second. Now suddenly they have an opportunity to grab some wins and we can see their uh, popping out there. Look like that might be almost look like it's Ricky Russell there in second. A little bit hard to tell. He was up there in the fight early in this one. That was for sure. And oh, is I that see a still white Bollinger? Fender front. Looks like Bollinger. He's got the backpack hydration system, and that is Ricky Russell in second. So Bollinger and Russell, one, two, and it looks like they pulled out a little bit of a gap on those behind them. Could also be Ashburn, though, up front there. He oh, good point. He would also be wearing that uh, hydration pack. We'll have to wait till we get a little closer shot. Uh, so we've got one of the Huskies out front, either Bollinger or Ashburn. And uh, then we do have Ricky Russell definitely in second. We know it's not Craig DeLong because it is a backpack hydration system. Uh, Craig at, would run the hip hydration yep. system. So they'll dump back in here. There's a pretty steep little downhill section, little ravine in here. They'll pop back out. We'll see him do some chicanes. And then they'll head over back towards the finish line. They will have one more wood section. They got to run before they actually make it to the finish line section. I will tell you, this track was a little bit deceiving. You know you're headed to the finish, and especially late in the race, and you kind of forget that cool. you've, you've got, as we're looking here, this section of pits that you see on screen, those woods off to the right there that you see, that is actually all between your coming, you're within 100 yards of the finish, and then it's like, nope, just kidding. <laughs> just uh, you kidding. got about another mile and a half out there. It's an easy section, but it's easy to catch you off guard. We should see him popping out here just about any moment, uh, and hopefully we'll be able to get a static ground shot or get a little closer and tell if that is, in fact, Ashburn or Trevor Bollinger out front. We're going to go with Bollinger for now because we knew I he was leading yeah. last we knew. I think it is. Ashburn, hey, he doesn't wear that bright yellow helmet anymore. Yeah, it makes it hard it, for it's us. It's a little harder. The only thing that's throwing me off that leads me to believe it's not Bollinger is the gear. Um, I, it didn't look like the new blue fly gear. Uh, there we have the mulch pile. <laughs> did you see the bikes collide? Uh, I did. Right of the screen. I, I, I mean, there's a lot of chaos going on on that mulch pile. <laughs> There's been one million laps turned by kids on e-bikes and yes. striders on that this weekend. Uh, and obviously also a little Stasix as well. So that's like the little <laughs> playground, but apparently we had a little head-on collision. Here we come. Here's our leaders. And it is still that Husky out front. That could be Bol The riding style says Bollinger. Um, yeah. I'm going with I, it. I, I definitely do think that is Trevor Bollinger. I've got the binoculars out. That looked like the 739. There we go. Yep. There we go. Trevor Bollinger. Yep, uh, the, the gear kind of threw me off. He's got, uh, he, I thought he might have the new 2022 and a half uh, gear on, but he, he is actually just wearing some 2022 stuff. You know, old. Old, yeah, there you go. Hey, it's uh, June, come on. Yeah, so there's your leaders out front. Trevor Bollinger, the 739, the Burt County Intimidator, as Rodney likes to call him. Intimidating the field and leading the way here on lap one at this Parts Unlimited Mason Dixon GNCC. Giving chase Ricky Russell back to the podium two weeks ago. Welcome back, Ricky Russell. Yeah. What a big way to kind of make a make a splash in his re-entry back in. He, he, I guess he's been back about three races now. Um, I think that was his third or possibly even his fourth race back uh, since having an injury earlier in the season. See Bollinger taking a look over his shoulder there to check and see who's behind him. And he sees the big 212 of the rough and rowdy one, Ricky Russell. <coughs> Mikey Wayne's choking on all of the excitement I here. Just, in the I'm choked TV up booth. about it. No, I was going to say, uh, you know, good on, on Ricky Russell. You guys talk about all the time, you practice speed versus race speed. I feel like he's finally getting reacclimated to, uh, or yeah, reacclimated to be the right word, for uh, the three-hour race. And um, I think that podium was the confidence boost that he needs. And, uh, you know, we head into this is kind of his style track. And then, of course, where we head next, Snowshoe is certainly his style. Matter of fact, I think that's where he's got his only XC1 win, if I'm not mistaken, back in 2017. Uh, yeah, 2017, I believe it was, yes. Um, he was riding for the Ampro uh, yeah. the Yamaha team, was able to grab the win there at Snowshoe. Um, but another factor to, to keep in mind here, Ricky rides for that Coastal Racing Gas Gas team based out of just down at the bottom of hill. Oh, the you're hill right. From this here. is so. This is his home, home stomping grounds. Home, yeah. I mean, he's not been out riding this property. I can assure you that. But sure. you know, he's probably ridden to places that you could throw a rock to from here. Here's uh, Mikey's dark horse for. I hey. wouldn't even say dark horse, but Mikey's right. pick for the day. Josh Toth. He thinks he's going to get it done. Currently running in the third spot. The 114. Josh Strang in fourth. Uh, Look like Ashford there, and then Craig, Craig DeLong. DeLong. Uh, it looks like those guys have started to gap out a little bit. So that's like your top six, I believe, through here at the 11-mile marker. And we'll wait. We'll still be waiting on Grant Baylor uh, and a few others here. Looks like it is Grant Baylor, the 314, the Grizzly one. 
You know, he doesn't get the greatest of uh, jumps on the first lap, but once he gets rolling, a look out. Trevor Bollinger blowing those berms out and coming in to lead lap one here. Uh, no more looks over the shoulder. He knows who's there. He knows it's Ricky. Now this will give him an opportunity to kind of see back through these chicanes, see what kind of a gap they're opening up, how his pace is, looks back, sees Josh Toth, and then a bunch of dust beyond that. Again, it is Strang. Right behind him, Jordan Ashburn. And that makes up your top five as they run here at the completion of lap number one. Get an idea of what we're looking at as far as gaps. You got a three second gap, call it three and a half, just under that, between Bollinger and Ricky Russell in the two spot. And the third place gap, my computer wants to bog down a little bit, but nonetheless, we'll get to you in a second. We'll, uh, we'll say it was gonna be nine, nine seconds back. All right. We'll see what it is when it actually I'm pops gonna go, up. I'm gonna go 10-5. 10-5, all right. 10-5. And our Windows 96, there we go. Josh Toth in that three spot. 10-3. Oh. Hey, we just about split it there. Huh? Closest without going over. That's you right. Win. You're right. Uh, Josh Strang back here in the four spot. He's got about six seconds back. And then Ashburn all over the rear wheel of Josh Strang right there. Only a second back. And two seconds back from him in six is the 3-4-2 of Craig DeLong. There you go. We're waiting on our leaders now at the one-mile marker. Uh, this is actually just where the track teed in from the start. Now, they are going to turn here and head to VP Fuels Pro Row. We will see them over there. Uh, but right now, we're waiting, we're watching, we're expecting to see the 739 of Trevor Bollinger popping into view here in just a moment. Big spectator section here, the FMF PowerPoint, pretty slick little hill climb. Uh, nothing too technical, but there is some opportunities for passing down in here. Uh, it's a real tight left-hander at the bottom. It's off camber, and they're really going to have to, especially since this wasn't run for the morning, there's no berm run in there. Uh, Bollinger taking that outside line. Carrying his speed through that uh, little section there. They're starting to open things up a little bit over the 212 of Ricky Russell. Uh, and Josh Toth still back there lurking in that number three spot. Here comes the 206 of Toth now in that final podium position. Josh Toth scooting right now. Uh, Grant Baylor checked in in the number seven spot. Going to try and take a look at this XC2 class. Want to see where those guys are at. My overalls, not one to play nice, but... Nonetheless, Barnes has checked in, Rui Barbosa, Benjamin Herrera, uh, Ben Nelco. We got a lot of XC2 riders. We'll get you an update on that as soon as this loads here. But XC2 guys checking in, getting our first look at uh, Pro Row right there, an auxiliary Pro Row, as Trevor Bullinger says hello into that little left-hander. That was the corner of Walker Fowler crash yesterday going yeah. the opposite direction. So it's slick, man. That Those rocks, that gravel, it's hard pack underneath. It's really hard to get grip here. So these... Uh, a lot of guys having some big offs in these sections yesterday. You lose the back end, and next thing you know, you're just along for the ride. All right, XC2, Liam Draper checked in in P1. It is Mike Wikowski, just the second back from him. Ryder Lafferty, uh, a second back and a half, or a second and a half back in third place. And Lyndon Snodgrass, your points leader, the 178 Babbitts online. Monster Energy Kawasaki ride in fourth. And Jonathan Johnson rounding out the top five in that XC2 class. Trevor Bollinger really overcooking that corner, able to get it saved, but for a moment it looked like he was going to miss it and have to do a U-turn or try to cut through the bushes there. Uh, those corners along that fence line sneak up on you for sure. Uh, Liam Draper leading the way in that XC2 class is another rider that's really based right out of here. Him obviously being kind of based out of Waynesburg, Pennsylvania, which is just about uh, 20 minutes north of here. Uh, so another local boy, although via New Zealand, uh, he's currently a, a Waynesburg, Pennsylvania area guy rides this type of terrain, these type of places all around, you know, the mountains surrounding here uh, every day. What does that do for you? I mean, you know, first few races of the season, we're down south. It's it's almost an equalizer, the sands of Florida, the Georgia clay. Uh, once we get back up in here into kind of the heart of GNCC, what does that do for a, for a rider that is from that area to get up into terrain you're more used to growing up with? Man, everybody's different, but I think there's certain riders that just become super motivated when they get close to home. Uh, they're motivated because, obviously, for a lot of friends and family, um, they feel kind of, you, you know, we've heard uh, many years ago, we heard Walker always talk about defend Ohio. You yeah. know, felt like that was his house. Well, you know, now Bryce and Neil lives closer <laughs> to the pen than he does. Uh, so with those two going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, they both kind of feel like it's theirs. But, you know, here on this weekend, like, I can assure you that Liam probably feels a little bit more confident, as does Ricky being from Washington. Hasn't been based here quite as right. long as Liam has. Liam's been here basically since moving uh, to the States. Uh -oh. Look at this. Angus Riordan in looking like they're doing a front wheel change, uh, or they were going to. 
but they made an adjustment of some kind, sent him out, did not change that front wheel, but nonetheless, a little bit of valuable time loss there. We'll see if he can claw his way back up into contention in that XC2 class. But uh, yeah, just a little extra confidence. When, when you know the terrain, he, you're kind of you're you're closer to home. You're sleeping in your own bed a lot of times, uh, and obviously we spend so much time on the road. And, and this goes for all of the GNCC crew, whether it's you know you guys as announcers, the racers, the track crew. You don't realize how much that grind of Without the constant travel wears you down. You know when you can when you can wake up and and eat breakfast at your at your yeah. you know breakfast table and you know sit in your easy chair in the morning for a little bit. Like it, it just. It gives you so much more energy, so much more enthusiasm. You're not like, well, you know, we got to go racing this weekend, so it's Wednesday. I'm going to have to start, you know, <laughs> thinking about working my way that way. I mean, these guys, a lot of them, like I said, went home, slept in their own beds. Um, it, it's just, just gives you that feeling of comfort. Yeah, no doubt. Trevor Bollinger on screen right there, rolling right now. Bollinger actually putting a little bit of a gap now uh, on Ricky Russell. We'll see if we the 212 pops into screen here in a second, but. Bollinger trying to stretch this thing out early. Can he keep that up for three hours of racing, though? Yeah, it's going to be tough, you know, for anybody to kind of run away with this one. I, I think uh, the track conditions really, as good as they are, it, it's kind of somewhat it leveled the playing field because there's really nothing super technical on this track that's going to separate anybody. There's no dust, so they can't really play that card to try to charge, kick up some dust, you know, get some breathing room. And especially once we do start to get into lappers, which obviously in the afternoon race isn't as much of a factor as it is in the morning. These guys can get around the lappers fairly easily. But we've seen just those couple seconds here, couple seconds there can be a make or break. I think we're going to see probably most of these riders kind of do the yo-yo thing closer, mm -hmm. farther until we get into lappers, uh, you know, and and then obviously once, as Rodney likes to say, we get into the money hour, that third hour. Yeah. That's when these guys, you know, they're going to show their fitness at that point. Here we see here is your leader. Ricky still oh, there's Ricky. Right He's right there. there. Okay. Yeah. We'll see what the gap is back to Josh Toth there in third, looking like it might have opened up just a little bit. You know, one thing I will point out, guys, uh, as I join you. <laughs> Welcome back, Rodney. Welcome back, Rodney. Not a problem. Uh, anyway. Uh, I hate to just jump in there, but I was just noticing what's impressive to me right now is the last handful of races, it seems like we've seen uh, the XC2 guys up there flirting with uh, possible podiums and strong top fives and things of that nature, maybe even leading on occasion, but today they check in in eighth place and on back. It's almost as if, you know, everyone's in their place right at the beginning of the race today as far as the way they're staged on the line itself. I think in a lot of cases that really has more to do with the XC1 class than it does the XC2. If you get a guy, a lot of times we see, the, depending on who gets the whole shot in that XC1 class and who leads that first lap, a lot of times we'll see a guy that's at the front that you know just wants to control the pace. It's a veteran. you know He knows like, hey, man, this race isn't going to be won or lost in this first race. Nobody behind him really wants to push the issue because it's still early, so they just kind of fall into that train where today – you know, Trevor Bollinger, he's an opportunist. He knows Ben Kelly's not here. Stu Baylor's out injured. Kind of some of the heavy hitters, you know, and, and I think he may look at the last race as a missed opportunity for him Absolutely. to grab that win. Yeah. And, and he's hungry for it. When he got a good start, he might have just got to the front and said, you know what, I'm going to floor it, see who mm -hmm. can hang, try and break some guys early. Must have some confidence in his fitness. Well, I'll tell you, proof in the pudding, when you look at the results right now, that right there seems to be as uh, good an analogy about something like that as – as could be told, Johnny, and as we look at that XC2 class, and you have been talking about it some, obviously, but uh, wow, what a deep talent pool in this one as well. Another strong contingent. You know, we got like eight, nine guys on the front row, and then you got like 30 guys on row number oh, no two. Doubt. And uh, it, it's just interesting to see the, the cream of that XC2 class actually rising to the top week after week the way that it does because when you look at that talent pool itself i mean we see a lot of changes in some swift chips but there's just a, a a handful of guys that always seem to be in it there in the xc2 class yeah it's that class is typically a little younger a little more enthusiastic and uh you know that's another class where things have had a shake up in the last couple rounds obviously the uh defending champion comes in gets injured at round one doesn't even isn't even able to finish round one. That kind of pops thing wide open. Mike Wikowski asserts his dominance early in the season. Then he's run into some struggles as of late. Uh, was kind of open on his social media saying he's had some health issues, had some yeah. issues. We know at the one race he had some bike issues. But he's been able to score points, keep himself in position where he's, you know, not way out of it. But Lyndon Snodgrass rising to the top, mm -hmm. grabbing that points lead, you know, grabbing some wins. And, uh, you know, really, really kind of 
starting to distance himself in that class. And then last race, we have Cody Barnes comes out and gets a win. So, yeah, a lot of parity in that class, but it, but at the same time, I think a lot of it comes back to those those guys seeing opportunity and really wanting to seize that opportunity. Correct me if I'm wrong. Did I not see Johnny Girard last week at the National Enduro? Yeah. Uh, sprint Enduro. For, yeah, yes. for National Sprint Enduro. And that's a good sign. Uh, I wondered if we'd see him out here today. Obviously, we haven't. Speaking of XCT riding right. on screen, Liam Draper leading the way. Ryder Lafferty in second. Uh, and it looks like they're in third place was Lyndon Snodgrass, the 178, that's your points leader, followed Mike by Wikowski. Mike Wikowski. Oh, so you got you got four of your heavy hitters right up front there, and obviously some of these guys, guys behind will be looking for the 99 of Cody Barnes. Uh, looks like there's the 347 of Evan Smith. That was one of the Phoenix Racing Hondas. Couldn't tell which one it was. They look so much alike. And uh, that is actually... Oh, that was the 347 of Evan Smith, so it must have been uh, Thornton Devlin, what we saw... Uh, ahead there, I must have been on the Husky. Hard, hard to catch numbers on these guys. A little bit grainy from this particular shot, but uh, yeah, it's uh, a lot of guys up there battling in that XC2 class. And there is, oh, I thought that was Riordan, but it's not. That was the 225. Oh, it was the 35. There's Mason Simmons. Uh, his 21st birthday, I believe, was yesterday, oh, judging by birthday. the Instagrams. And uh, Josh Strang, the freight train, took him over an adult beverage yesterday <laughs> morning to uh, celebrate. And I, I think it was pretty early in the morning. Judging, judging by the look on his face, he, he wasn't quite ready for God whatever bless. was in the cup. That's fantastic. Well, I tell you, we definitely got ourselves an interesting race of brewing here at the Matthews Family Farm for this, the Parts Unlimited Mason Dixon GNCC. Currently out front, they're nose to tail, and it's still anybody's race. Will anyone be able to top the Intimidator today as he lays down the charge? Stick around to find out. GNCC Live continues after this. Last season was my best season ever by far. I won a lot of races, I won a championship, and it was my, also my first year using Arma. And one of the things I noticed was just my ability to string good days together. You know, like especially in the summertime in Florida where you're riding every day and the heat index is 108 degrees and you're doing 230s and going to the gym and bicycle and, and all that stuff. I think in the past I've been super inconsistent day to day. Yeah, I may have a, you know, a good race here or, you know, a good day during the week there. But overall, I think where I improved the most was my consistency in my recovery. Tires, a division of Greenball Corp, has been in the tire business for over 44 years. We're passionate about developing quality tires that perform great and bring extraordinary value to our customers. tire that can handle your off-road adventures, need a reliable tire to take you from job site to job site, or simply want a tire with a beefier look that won't break the bank, then check out Kanati Tires.
USMCA has been connecting riders to certified coaches since 2016. There are over 300 active certified coaches on MotorcycleCoaching.org, and we recently launched our new mobile app, making it easy to connect with a coach and book your next training session. So here's what you do. Download the Motorcycle Coaching app, then search for coaches in upcoming classes. Once a training session is booked, riders have the option to pay for their class and even get a calendar reminder that will automatically sync to their phone. Get connected today. Even when you're the best, you never stop striving to be better. With over 40 years of experience in motorcycle sales and service, we know racing. Our inventory of Yamaha motorcycles, sport bikes, dirt bikes, ATVs, and side-by-sides is extensive and constantly changing. Stop by Lojack Cycle Sales today in Tarentum, Pennsylvania, and visit our online inventory at www.lojacks.com. Yamaha YZ. It's why we ride. How would you like to go to a school where we take into consideration how students learn best? Well, we do that. Because we find if we can build the curriculum around the things you are interested in, you're going to do a better job. The mission at On Track School is that educational success is possible while chasing your dreams. Not only will our staff help students to achieve success, they will cheer you on to the finish line. We encourage you to check out On Track School at ontrackschool.com, where we can help you chase your dreams and still get a quality education. OnTrackSchool.com, check it out. And welcome back to GNCC Live as we wait at the 8 at the Monster Mile. And reports are we've got a new leader, Ricky Russell, coming into sight now on the 212 Coastal Racing Gas Gas. And look at this, riding with a fever like he is trying to get away from that second place ride now. And that looked like Bollinger, I believe, going by there. Now in the number two spot and a... Bit of a gap back to now the number three spot, Johnny Gallagher. Absolutely. Ricky Russell grabbing that lead. Now, tell you what I noticed the last shot before we went away. It looked like Josh Strang was starting to stir back there in that fourth place spot. Looking like he was starting to push a little bit to try to get up closer to Josh Toth. Oh, look at that. Now, Jordan Ashburn has actually made the pass on Strang, so he's the rider on the move. Craig DeLong putting some pressure on. So back there, I think, is where the action at. Those four guys are going to try to push to try to get themselves up closer to those front two. So they've got the three trying, and look at this, Grant Baylor now pushing, closing up that gap, and the Grizzly is starting to get a little hungry. You know, I saw that when they came through the uh, pits there just a few moments ago. I was uh, standing outside the trailer as they made their way through the pro pits and, and watched the top, top riders go through. And I saw that, uh, you know, that, that Grant had uh, was well within striking distance for Grant Baylor at this point in the race and in a really good position for himself at this point in the race. So that's uh, pretty exciting for him. Pretty exciting for Ricky Russell, too, to see him getting the up to the speeds and, and, of course, being able to maneuver himself into that number one spot. And what's really cool about that is uh, I know he, as we've been talking, a lot of people are excited about that and uh, the possibilities that may loom in that. But uh, I know they've also got a lot of other things on their minds. We had a chance to check in with Ricky Russell coming into this race weekend. Well, he's definitely got himself in a really good position right now, Johnny. And, you know, uh, again, you know, we saw this happen yesterday, you know, with the uh, early sprints that we had going on there with uh, Hunter Hart in the early part of the race, you know. And uh, we're seeing early sprints again here today. Obviously, the pace was set right off the bat by Trevor Bullinger. Ricky Russell rose right to the occasion. And, you know, through these uh, first couple hours, we expect to see some really good racing. But the third hour is going to come into play. Heat and temperatures today. It's not overly hot, but there is an intense sun shining down. So if you are getting any of that sunshine at any point, it is going to be uh, not necessarily over uh, daunting, but it, it, it is going to play a little bit of a role, I think, as far as heat is concerned today. But 
Again, in the shade, it stays cool enough that it might balance itself out there. Uh, we need the pit crew of XC3 rider Zachary Gariff to the finish line. Once again, XC3 Zachary Gariff to the finish line. The pit crew of XC3 rider uh, Zachary, if you are know the whereabouts of him, uh, please have them go to the finish line. That would be appreciated as we are once again looking for our leaders here at this next section of racetrack, Johnny. And, you know, you talked about uh, dust. You, I heard you mentioning that a few moments ago and that, you know, we don't have a lot of dust. However, we will see some dust kicking up, but the kind of dust that you were talking about is that kind of dust that where you get those big dusty, silty berms that, you know, people plow into and you get that that just that heaviness in the air. It may be dry today, but yeah, and you may see some dust, but this is not a dusty day by no stretch of the imagination. No, and the, the dirt in the woods is perfect, and, and that's really where the dust becomes an issue, uh, is in the woods when it's kind of hanging there. Ooh, that was a little of a close call there. <laughs> Ricky Russell leading the way on the 212 Coastal Racing Gas Gas out front pushing the pace, trying to get away from the 739 of Trevor Bollinger. And Rodney, like you mentioned, you know, honestly, in that interview with Ricky, he just, he looked confident, you know, coming into the weekend. We already talked. It's a bit of a home race for him or as close to a home race as, as he's going to get. He spends a lot of time here in the Waynesburg, Pennsylvania area uh, with the Coastal Racing Gas Gas Shop and Bicon being right down the hill, literally at the bottom of the hill from this racetrack. Um, so this is kind of his stomping ground, spends a lot of time here, rides his terrain, you know, rides, I'm sure, these roads on his mountain bike a lot. So he basically feels like it's a weekend at home for him just out riding his dirt bike. And confidence is king, man. He, he looks good. He looks like he's really just hitting his marks and clicking off his laps. Bollinger, though, keeping him honest, staying close, uh, really keeping the pressure on uh, Ricky Russell there. And those guys have opened up a little bit more of a gap for a minute there. It looked like uh, Toth was putting in a push in the third place position. But right now, it looks like these two, it's just a mono e mono battle. And uh, they're coming out. A little bit of dust kicking up, like you mentioned, but nothing these guys can't see through. Um, now, if you get six, eight guys together, you know, it, it could start to be a bit of a brownout. But uh, they're working their way here on some fast, dusty sections. They've got one more uh, kind of little chicane section before they will work their way uh, back towards the finish line. Obviously, we're seeing there at the 11-mile marker, and uh, this being about a 13-and-a-half-mile track. You know, uh, amazingly, we talk about uh, Ricky Russell being from the northwest and great state of Washington, obviously, a lot of mountainous terrain. But it, the amazing thing to me is how well he rides these these open sections like this. Uh, I just watched him stretch it out over Trevor, and, and we just witnessed that. I mean, they were so much closer when they came into this section, leaving the field section here, Johnny. Uh, it looked like that Ricky had about doubled or more than doubled the, 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 the gap between he and Bollinger. Well, you got to remember, I mean, Ricky's, uh, yes, he was a... Um yeah, transplant from Washington State, but he's essentially been based here on the East Coast and riding this train now since 2013. So that's uh, nine years that he's been here campaigning the GNCC series, racing these tracks, and you know at this point it, he's almost a local. It's it's hardly like a transplant from the West Coast anymore. Right. Uh, but he hasn't lost those skills that he has for the Absolutely technical not. slick riding, which you know we've talked about already. He got his win there at, at Snowshoe about five years ago, and uh, we're going there again in three weeks. So I'm sure there'll be a little bit extra pep in Ricky's step uh, going and. and while we're talking about Ricky, he's leading the race, leading the way. You know, he's really been such a dynamic story going back to 2013, moving out here just with his van, uh, <laughs> essentially just kind of saying didn't really have a plan, didn't have a place to live, just knew he <laughs> wanted to come race GNCCs. Uh, blew up both of his KTMs within a week of being here. Ended up borrowing a bike from Paul Wibley to race the first race. Was going to race XC2. Uh, got out here, could only really get his hands on a 450 from Wibley, so he just jumped right into XC1. Uh, did go back and race XC2 for a couple years. Then after, uh, for the Reigns, uh, Reigns Riding University Yamaha team, uh, had some great success there. But he's really kind of stepped up little by little each year to where he's was a you know contender for wins in the XC2 class, ultimately <laughs> became a podium contender. And if you want to go back to even 2020, you know, Ricky was riding um, for what was then the Coastal Racing Husqvarna team. Uh, and, you know, was battling Caleb Russell for wins. It looked like it was kind of just a matter of time until, he, you know, he was really going to start clicking off the wins, had that big, big, scary yeah. crash, serious injury, and then it's just been a series of little things the last two years for Ricky holding him back. Here we see our battle for the lead in the XC2 class. That is still the 198 of Liam Draper out front. The uh, rider Lafferty there in second place on another Coastal Racing Gas Gas, a good day for those guys, and now uh, lurking there back in third place. Looked like it may have been the 178 of Linden Snodgrass. We'll see when they check in. 
So really two good battles going on up front here in the Mason Dixon GNCC. And uh, I'm sure many more as we'll take a look a little deeper into some of these classes in just a few moments. But uh, looking out over this terrain from our Yamaha live drone right now, uh, a, a, a pretty decent turnout this weekend, though we don't see them stacked in here and packed in here like they may have been yesterday and on Friday. Uh, man, a great turnout. I know a lot of folks showed up late this morning for the morning race, so we've had a lot of local turnout for that. We, that's one reason we were a little late. We were uh, getting that race started, and we were working on trying to get things started as close to on time as, as we could this afternoon, and hats off to the track crew for that. I know they had hoped to be able to to shorten that by about five minutes, but unknown variables sometimes, but uh, really getting uh, off and rolling pretty close to where, uh, you know, a normal start time here. And, uh, but uh, wow, I mean, just a beautiful facility, the, uh, the Matthews Family Farm, and just across the road again is High Point Raceway. And right here on this side of the road is that battle for that number one spot that uh, again, is uh, we'll see here now. Will Ricky be able to stretch things out here in this open section, like we saw him over Trevor Bollinger, the last open section, field section or woodline section, I guess you could say. But uh, he really seems to find some good speeds out here and has acclimated himself to uh, the trains and uh, just the consistency of this dirt here. And and one thing that I have to think, you know, we we go a lot of places where you know there there's different types of dirt, Johnny, that, you know, it might be a little clay, you might have some loam here, but, you know, I think this one right here might be as, as diverse, if not more diverse than maybe some of the other with a lot of strip land pro uh, properties here. Yeah, absolutely. You know, this place, uh, and, and the irony of this is we're actually riding a couple different properties here. As you pointed out in your pre-race, uh, you know, obviously we actually crossed the Mason-Dixon line. Right. Uh, we race in West Virginia. We race in Pennsylvania. This course covers both. And uh, to the best of my knowledge, it's actually two separate property owners might be part of the same family. But um, so this ground that, that we're seeing here was all strip mined at some point. A lot of it's been reclaimed. Uh, but when they cross into West Virginia there, that is all ground that has never been strip mined. And it's kind of more undulating. There's a lot of ravines over on that side of the property. So, yeah, I mean, definitely um, this side, the side that we're looking at right now, the, the Pennsylvania side of this Mason-Dixon racetrack, um, strip ground, a lot of cobblestony rock underneath, hard to get any kind of grip on it whatsoever. And uh, as, as you're looking at this ground here, you know, you can see that cobble just kind of sticking through. Mm -hmm. It really makes it hard to kind of judge your grip we mm -hmm. said that you, you know it's been mentioned a couple times in the show already walker fowler losing the rear end in, yep. in that corner yesterday high siding uh i know jared mcclure had a big big crash yep. high siding at high speed um you know it, it's so easy to lose grip with the rear end or the front end uh, on this track but then you go on to the back side the west virginia side and there's just so much grip in the dirt you almost can't even crack the throttle wide open because the bike just wants to wheelie out from underneath you ricky russell still leading the way on screen from our yamaha live drone chicaning through here and uh couple of hay bales set out to get you a little wiggle through there uh they don't want to get the speed up too much because obviously they're crossing a road there but now he gets the speed up got one of these big long mason dixon straightaways turning along this fence line and uh back on the gas just about a three quarters of a mile stand between him and the completion of lap number two 55 minutes into this one starting to shape up to look like it's going to be a six lap race right yeah according to uh lap time certainly uh, doing just exactly that uh Kudos again to uh, Trevor Bollinger back there in that number two spot. He is not letting Ricky Russell get too far out of sight. Now, when they checked through at the, at the end of that first lap, it was a little over three seconds that put Bo uh, and Bollinger was ahead at that point. And we're not much different than that right now. The gap back to Josh Toth was 10 seconds. I think we're looking 20 plus seconds now back to that third place position. And things are tightening up behind him right now as you've got Looks like Strang, Ashburn, Craig DeLong all closing in right now. Yeah, right on screen there we saw second, third, and fourth. There is first and second. Two, three, and four were really close there. Uh, it, you could see all in the same shot. You could see Josh Toth. Uh, as we mentioned before, Jordan Ashburn has gotten around. Strang is up in now to the fourth place position. But Strang right on his rear wheel there in fifth. So your top five, and especially that three through five, that's a real close battle that we're going to be watching to kind of settle over who's going to try to grab this final podium spot. There you go on screen. That is Toth heading across the, uh, oh, we're going to cut away. But here at the three-mile marker, uh, Method Race Wheels Alley and uh, 
we're going to see the 739 of Trevor Bollinger and also the leader 212 of Ricky Russell coming down here. And from here, it's just a few quick chicanes, and they'll be in with two laps complete. Just shy of, of an hour is what it's looking like it's going to be for two laps. Hey, just a uh, quick interesting note. Uh, right now, XC2 250, or excuse me, 250A class leader is actually up in amongst the XC2 class. He is 16th place overall. Nathaniel Bubbs Tasha is uh, leading that right now. And uh, as we look back a little further, he's only got a three second lead over Grant Davis, who's running currently 19th place overall on adjusted time. And, and, and maybe not a big surprise because the XC3 class is a 125 class, but uh, no XC3 guys in the top 20 right now, but those 250A guys are starting to make it happen. Yeah, Bubs Tosh is another one that's been spending a good bit of time around here the last few weeks. Uh, obviously riding a lot of this train. Here is Ricky Russell now. Just two more turns and he will be, oh, yeah, 739 of Bollinger. Every time Ricky stretches it out, Trevor's able to just reel him back in. Trevor not willing to let him get away. Smart move on Trevor's part. You know, you might easily say, well, you know, I'm just going to kind of settle into my pace. It's a three-hour race. I, you know, I don't want to exert too much energy. But Trevor Bollinger definitely wanting to keep a shot at this win. And, you know, when you can't see the guy, you just don't know what he's doing. And right now, Trevor Bollinger is keeping him right within eye shot and uh, obviously showing that he has the pace to run with Ricky right now. So front two are in and out. We'll get a uh, accurate account of the deficit between second and third right now. It was 10 seconds at the end of lap number one. 2.3 is what we scored in at at the end of the second lap between Ricky and uh, Trevor Bollinger through those chicanes. And now we watch Ricky as he looks over his shoulder. It almost looks like, again, he's starting to stretch it out just a little bit, but I'm sure not much more than the two seconds that we're thinking about, or is it? Because... Uh, Man, he's really hot on the gas right now, it looks like. Yeah, it seems Trevor doesn't seem as, as intent on staying right on Ricky's rear wheel in some of the open sections. And a big reason for that is we talked about this being old strip ground. I mean, these guys are throwing softball-sized rocks <laughs> yeah. every time they get on the throttle. So you want to be just far enough back that you're not uh, taking those rocks to the forks or to the goggles or to the knuckles or whatever it may be. Um, so, again, it, it could be Ricky pushing the pace. It could also be Trevor just kind of pacing himself in those open sections and then pushing it to get back close when they get in the woods. Well, Josh Cho, 29.9, will call it an even 30, basically, back to the number three spot. Jordan Ashburn, three seconds behind him at timing and scoring. Josh Strang was fifth, another three seconds back. Grant Baylor, or excuse me, Craig DeLong in six, two seconds back. And get this, Grant Baylor only eight and a half seconds back in that uh, number seven spot now. So uh, those uh, eight XC1 Pro class riders are still top eight in the overall here at the end of lap two. We'll see if the XC2 250 class has been able to pick any pace up out there as Draper, Witkowski, Lafferty, Snodgrass, and the boys should be coming through here pretty soon at the finish line. What we're also gonna see here in a minute is what is the fuel stop strategy for the day? They're coming in to the pit stop area, and are they gonna do a flyby and go on a one-stop strategy? Looks like that <laughs> is gonna be the case. Yeah. Nobody's stopping, everybody just back on the hammer and uh, out, so looking like these guys are all gonna go with a uh, one-stop strategy, meaning they'll stop on lap number three, one time for fuel, probably get some fresh goggles, maybe a drink of water and be back on their way. You know, that's one of the things that always plays into GNCC racing is pit stop strategy. These guys know how much fuel they can use, and it's not always about time as much as it is about distance and how the course lays out. If it's a faster track, they're gonna use more fuel. If it's a tighter, slower track, they're gonna use less. So obviously they're confident in their ability to make it an hour and a half uh, today on one tank of fuel, and then they'll stop, fill her up, and uh, head out to finish this thing out. So we should see a big round of pit stops next lap probably see a few riders stop in this lap obviously if they need goggles or if they need a drink and they're going to be stopping anyway they'll splash and top off there we see going the other way is that battle for now third fourth fifth sixth all pretty much wheel to wheel there and we should see here in just a matter of a few moments there, there on the bottom left of your screen the grizzly grant baylor now clawing his way up into that now four rider battle about to be a five rider battle over that final podium position well, physically about three minutes behind those guys on the racetrack, according to time scanned at least. Ryder Lafferty has taken over the lead in the XC2 250 class with Liam Draper now 
uh, two seconds back in the number nine spot overall in second in class. Lyndon Snodgrass third in class and 10th overall. He's 3.2 seconds back. Witkowski is the 11th overall, fourth in class, 1.3 seconds back behind that now. So those uh, front four in the XC2250 class still going at it right now, Johnny. Yeah, and uh, wheel to wheel to wheel, and there looks like we see those guys on screen right there. Uh, absolutely just pushing the pace like crazy, trying to, uh, you know, assert their dominance, trying to get to the point everybody wants to lead. But uh, right now, it seems none of those guys can shake each other loose. Uh, now, oh, that's a lapped rider there. I thought we had our leaders coming the other way, but we should have them here in uh, just a matter of a few moments popping up. So again, just waiting. This is uh, one of those days. I mean, the pace is quick, but it doesn't necessarily seem to be an overly intense pace. You know, it's a good steady pace and it's quick, but it's not that sense of urgency pace that I thought we might be seeing ourselves working toward early on because of, well, obviously that sense of urgency in the beginning to try to establish some early dominance by Trevor Bollinger and then of course by uh, Ricky Russell, uh, who now at last check anyway in the lead. Well, I, I think the pace up front is a little bit faster than it's showing. These guys look pretty under control, but the fact that Ricky and Trevor were able to pull out an additional 20 seconds over Josh Toth, who's not lollygagging around, and he's got some pressure from behind by Jordan Ashburn, last race winner's Josh Strang, Craig DeLong, who's hit third points. Here is Ricky on screen. Here is your leader, and he is working out now on lap number three of what we believe will be a six-lap race crossing under those power lines, maybe get shocked by his handlebars. <laughs> Anybody who's gotten a little close to those power lines this weekend, it's not hard to get lit up. <laughs> just don't touch anything metal. Uh, and there is Trevor Bollinger. Just saw him for a moment there. You can see him through the trees. Still right there stalking Ricky Russell. You know, letting Rick, I wouldn't say letting, but at this point trying to kind of key off of Ricky's speed, letting Ricky be the tow truck. He's the trailer. Um, potentially maybe trying to save some energy for a late race charge to uh, put himself in position for a win. Sounds like Mikey Waynes might have an update for us. Honda Pits, Cody Barnes pulling in for a little bit more of an extensive pit stop. We'll see if we can get a word, see what's going on, but uh, really just a goggle change and back to it. But something definitely up with Cody Barnes right now. Well, I hate to hear that because Cody's had some successes as of recently and uh, really looked like he was getting some good momentum going in his favor. Same thing for Rui Barbosa. We've seen some good things out of him, but kind of flattened out, I think, a little bit in the last race or so. But, uh, hey, there's still time to shine out there for uh, for both those guys. But, uh, yeah, good, good, uh, good team there with the Phoenix Racing Honda. They're still... Uh, you know, trying to establish a stranglehold, if you will, in the GNCC world. But you got to say they're doing a really good job for one of the uh, newbies on the block, if you will. Yeah, a lot of things going, a lot of great things going on over there in that Phoenix camp. David Eller and his crew doing a great job. I know they uh, have a powerhouse team on the ATV motocross side of things. Obviously, they have a supercross and an arena cross team. So hats off to that crew. I mean, they've got their, uh, they throw their hat into a lot of arenas and doing well in all of them. Josh Strang now, or I'm sorry, Josh Toth now with a lot of pressure from the big number three of Jordan Ashburn. Josh Strang there in the fifth place spot. Craig DeLong in sixth and all of those guys in touch with each other. Rodney, in that last shot, to me, it looked like Trevor Bollinger not only got closer to Ricky, but was starting to look a little rammy. Like maybe he wanted to get up there and take a crack at taking that point position back, which he held for most of lap number one. Uh, but right now, it looking like he may want to take it back. Yeah, I mean, uh, you don't want to, to let him ride there too long to get too much confidence. But then again, you know, uh, this might be a good day to play the cat and mouse game. Uh, maybe try to push him a little bit, exert some energy. And as you work towards that third hour at the end of lap number two and start heading into that third hour, uh, maybe try to push them into exerting a little bit too much energy so you can maybe capitalize on some mistakes they may make in that in those final moments. Well, you know, and we were kind of talking about this before we shifted gears a little bit, but the important thing, if you're Ricky Russell, if you're Trevor Bollinger, right now, you want to keep this a two-rider battle. Yes. Because you've got a snarling pack of, again, four guys, maybe soon to be five, that all have the capability to win races. And the last thing you want to do is have a seven-rider battle on the last lap over a win. As exciting as it would be for us, we would love it. <laughs> right. That would be absolutely nerve-wracking as a racer. Right now, if you're Ricky Russell, if you're Trevor Mollinger, 
the way things run, if they would stay this way, not saying they would, it's kind of a two-man battle for first, and, and if you're off just a little bit, you're gonna end up second. Jordan Ashburn has made the pass on Josh Toth, now up to the third place position, and Jordan's starting to push. Wow. Toth looking like he may be struggling to go with Ashburn a little bit. Strang looking jumpy there in the fourth place, or fifth place spot, and Craig DeLong in sixth. Where is the 314 of Grant Baylor? Looking like he is not yet able to quite latch on there, and that is the key. If he can get to the rear wheel of Craig Long, that is gonna help him conserve energy, pull him along at that pace, but he's gotta get there first. Hey, if you know Grant's pace, he's still a little early for that. <laughs> sure. Yeah, we're only an hour seven into this, Grant. Grant's just basically having his morning coffee. Right. Yeah. He's, he's, not, uh, he's not fully awake yet. He's kind of out there going through the motions, and I say that with all the respect in the Absolutely. world because we know how much he can and likely will pick up the pace later in the race. If he's comfortable, if it's a track he's liking, we could see him cut through the pack in front of him like a hot knife through the Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, I could see him having some comfort here at this particular facility for some reason. Uh, part of that being... Uh, uh, even though there's some, you know, some good trails and stuff and some good speeds out there, it's it's a comfortable speed, I think, for, for Grant Baylor that he is uh, uh, willing to, you know, to take the chances that he needs to take in, in, in this type of conditions. Absolutely. Here we see some uh, some of our B-class and A-class riders working their way through here at the four mile marker. And this really shows the gap that these guys have opened up over that XC2 class. We talked about it earlier, the XC1 class, man, the hammer is all the way down today, and these guys are just pulling a gap. Well, an hour and eight minutes into this when the battle wages on between Ricky Russell and Trevor Bollinger. Last time we left, we came back with a new leader. Can Trevor Bollinger find his way back around Ricky Russell? Will Josh Toth Ashburn strangle the long make the catch? Stick around to find out. GNCC Live continues after this. Brown's RV Superstore is family owned and operated and stake their reputation on offering you the finest RVs available in their McBee, South Carolina RV dealership. Brown's RV Superstore carries motor homes, fifth wheels, travel trailers, and toy haulers and keep a huge inventory of new and used RVs in stock for you to choose from. They offer top dollar for your RV trade-in and help you get the RV financing you need. As a part of the GNCC family, Brown's RV Superstore in partnership with Vengeance Toy Haulers offer sponsorship packages for every level of racer with discounts and continued savings on your new toy hauler. Brown's RV Superstore has dedicated themselves to complete customer satisfaction, specializing in providing a positive start to your RV adventure. They look forward to customers coming back to share their tales from the road. Call Brown's RV Superstore today at 877-805-3658 or visit their website at brownsrvsuperstore.com where family fun begins. The Rock Run GNCC has always been known as just that, a rock run, but a whole lot of fun. And though there are a lot of rocks, this track has something for everyone. And on this day in Yamaha history 2011, it was no different. A young Jedediah Haynes grabbed the early hole shot, but it was New Zealand's Paul Wibley who gained early control. The Axeman Wibley on board his Ampro packed Yamaha was able to pull away a 21 second lead at the end of lap number one over riders like Mike Lafferty, Charlie Mullins, Caleb Russell, Chris Bach, and many more. A hot dry day made racing extremely challenging, testing the rider skill patience and endurance. Josh Strang, the defending champion, laid chase to Wibley, closing that gap on lap number two. And by the end of lap number two, it put Paul Wibley nearly against the wall. A side-by-side -side battle through those rocks and through those trees and through that dust made for a lot of excitement. As the race wore on, Wibley saw that gap begin to widen back up. It went from five seconds at the end of lap number two to 19 seconds to 34 seconds and by races in an amazing one minute and 56 seconds over second place. It was a banner day for Paul Wibley aboard his hand pro Yamaha, marking not only another great win for this rider, but also seeding the heart for our 2012 championship to follow only one year later. And that's this week in Yamaha history.
We all have our reasons to accomplish, to work hard. We share a common goal to be the best. Keep fighting, put in the work, never take the easy way. Your drive and determination fuels our passion. Welcome back to GNCC Live on RacerTV.com. Rodney Tom along with Johnny Gallagher and Mikey Waynes out and about. At last check, Ricky Russell leading Trevor Bollinger. They had about a 30-second gap over an intense shaping up battle for third place between Josh Toth, Jordan Ashburn, Josh Strang, and Craig DeLong. Also, Grant Baylor rolling back there about 10 seconds behind that battle that was waging. And last lap we came through, and there's Ricky Russell. He's still out front, but look how close his trailer is now, the 739, within reaching distance of that rear fender now, it looks like, Johnny Gallagher, as they make their way past this eight-mile marker at the Monster Mile. Yeah, things are definitely tightening up in that battle for the lead. Uh, it's starting to, oh, look oh, at this, Jordan Ashburn closing. That wasn't up. 30 That's seconds. 30 seconds. He is put in a charge, and now Josh Strang has also gotten around Josh Toth, so Josh Toth back to that fifth-place spot with a lot of heat wow. from Craig DeLong in the sixth place spot putting the pressure on wanting a piece of that top five and here comes the grizzly grizzly bear's got his claws out working his way around some lappers and wants to take a bite out of the guys in front of him. well i tell you this leads me to wonder that what happened up front because it almost looks like both ricky and russell and trevor bowlands are slowed down to allow those guys to catch up because the gap that we're seeing there between those riders are still about the same as what we saw when they when we last went away around the four mile marker Johnny and uh, coming back they are about the same as they were but they are so much closer well that's kind of what we were talking about uh, a little bit ago there with you know Ricky Russell and Trevor Bollinger definitely definitely wanting to keep this a two rider race but sometimes it's hard when you're only keying off of one other person because you know it's harder to tell how fast you're going because in Ricky's mind if he's still leading you know, he's thinking, well, I must be going fast enough because Trevor's not trying to pass me, but they don't know that that group behind them is pushing so hard. Those guys are getting pit boards 30 seconds, 25 seconds, 23 seconds, you know, and it's just motivation for them. Also, they're in the position, they know, you know, if they make one mix up, one, one miss line, one mistake, they're gonna drop three, four spots in a matter of one corner. So these guys are just absolutely pushing 100%. And right now it's causing them to close that gap up. They're not quite there yet. They've still got, you know, it, it could take another lap or more if they can keep up this intensity to get to the rear wheel of Trevor Bollinger and Ricky Russell. But if they do, Rodney, I'll tell you what, I'm just gonna go ahead and take this stool that Racer TV has provided <laughs> here for me and chuck it out the back of the TV studio because I'm gonna be on my feet for the next nearly two hours if we get a seven rider battle 
for, oh. for a race win. That would be some exciting stuff. Uh, I'm definitely going to need oxygen. <laughs> it's And it's shaping up like it could be that. And to see something like that, you know, it, it would certainly ring true the statements that we made and the hype that we bring with, you know, with uh, some of the, the top key players being out and these guys having that that fever and that, that feeling that I could be the guy. Here comes the battle for XC2 that we've been watching. Looks like uh, Ryder Lafferty, uh, Liam Draper back there, and I believe Stodgrass still back in the number three spot, Johnny. Yep, there is your top three in that XC2 class, and we'll be waiting on the fourth place rider, which was and still is the 282 of Mike Wachowski. So still in touch, but if he wants a piece of that podium, if he wants a shot at the win, he's going to need to find a little something, just that five to seven seconds that he needs to get back up there. And now here is the 14 of Rui Barbosa, another one of those Phoenix Honda racing riders that we were talking about just a moment ago. Now he was about six seconds behind Jonathan Johnson in 13th place overall. There, and that, there that, goes Johnson. And uh, he's, oh, see, he's gotten around him. Johnson's dropped back. So uh, Rui Barbosa actually moving up just a little bit right now. So we'll be keeping an eye on him, see if he can reel those guys up just ahead of him. Oh, is that Angus Riordan? Was he able to work his way uh, back up after that extended pit stop? Uh, looks like Evan Smith there. The was it Herrera, maybe? No, that was the 22 of Herrera that just went by. Okay, maybe it was the 35 of Wait, Angus. Was he Riordan. next behind Herrera? Yeah. So it looks like he's made his way back around Herrera and also around the 347 of Evan Smith. So after that extended pit stop, we saw just a, a well, I guess it was two laps. No, it was a lap ago from uh, Angus Riordan. He's back up and, and banging on the door trying to get back into the top five. Pretty impressive, to say the least, as uh, we roll here now at the one hour, 18 minute mark. Have not even hit the halfway point, Johnny. So uh, yeah, like you said, I mean, the, the, the possibility definitely looming for a near seven man battle and shootout for the win. And, and I gotta say, uh, to see something like that, I've seen some great things in GNCC racing, but I don't know that I've ever seen seven guys going for the win, believe it or not. I'd, I'd have to go back and look some races, at least on the ATV side that, that stick out to me. I do remember Rock Run, uh, the year that Walker Fowler actually ended up grabbing uh, the win there, I believe it would have been 2011. Um, we actually just saw the bike side of that battle uh, on our Yamaha recap. Um, but there was, I can't remember what place I ended up finishing, but at one point on the last lap, I was in touch in all of us from first to like eighth or ninth were in the same corner on the very last lap of racing. Walker Fowler ended up winning that race from the XC2 class, uh, but there was, yeah, seven, eight, nine XC1 guys all in the final, in the final miles within the same corner. It was pretty wild. Uh, and and I, I think, unfortunately, I ended up coming out on the very low end. I think I got <laughs> sixth or seventh, might've been sixth overall on the day, but it was, we crossed the finish line, just bang, 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 oh, you know, to the point where I think they actually had to go back and, and look at the transponders because guys were crossing side by side and you know it was decided by well hey your transponder crossed first here is your leader on screen ricky russell uh looks like we may have at least for the moment had a little bit of a gap open up over trevor bollinger the 739 machine we're not seeing him on screen yet We'll keep an eye open and watch and see if we can get an eyeball on the 739. He may fall back into the grass. Uh, looks like it was just him there, but he's falling back now. Looks like the guys behind him are really putting on a charge, and he may be in danger of those guys being able to see him here in the coming miles, grabbing a bottle of water there. Looks like it was the number three of Jordan Ashburn, and there is Grizzly Grant on the tail end of that, looking like he's actually now, it looks like DeLong has gotten around Toth. So Toth was in that third place spot, now all the way back to sixth, and has some pressure from behind from the 314 of Grant Baylor on that uh, <laughs> Rev, I, you tell the team. Rev, Rev Motorsports Gas Gas. Rev Motorsports Gas Gas. That, that, Hard to keep a lot of things on that the team. Great effort there, but they, there's been a lot of sponsor changes. So. There may be some sponsor changes, but you got to tip your hat to the core yeah. of that team, man. They have really worked so hard from the inside. No matter what you're seeing on the outside, those guys are staying true on the inside. And, and you've got to appreciate that. I know they've lost some sponsors. They've had some sponsor changes, but they've had support for their riders at the track. The mechanics are working tirelessly, so definitely hats off to that team for sure. Uh, I, I only said that because I didn't want to name the wrong right. title nope, sponsor. Absolutely. I know there's been a few throughout the year. So um, definitely uh, Grant Baylor 
doing those guys proud today. Put himself currently in that seventh place spot, but has sixth right in front of him, fifth right in front of that, fourth and third right in front of that, and the leaders aren't too far off in the distance. Man, this, this is shaping up to be uh, quite possibly one of the most memorable GNCCs in history. Uh, if this uh, begins to pan out anything like what we what we are seeing, the possibilities for, and uh, again, that it could be a, a five to seven man shootout if, uh, but Ricky Russell, I will say this, he may be the spoiler in that because he has and is doing a good job of still keeping that gap, even though that gap had closed up. If you noticed in this section, it almost looks to me like Ricky Russell might have found another gear and opened it up some over uh, all those chasing. Yeah, I, judging by the way Bollinger lost time there, I think it could be a combination of both things there. I think it could be Ricky picking up the pace, perhaps what we like to speculate here, we'll speculate maybe he got a pit board and they said, uh, hey, you're leading, but um, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and oh, by the way, seventh are all closing in on you. So let's pick it up a little bit. Could be a, a that. And then I do think that Trevor Bollinger may have had either a crash or running with a lap or something that caused him because that gap opened up more than it should have for the amount of racetrack covered. Oh, and now oh, so that, that could explain a lot. It All does right. make what made more sense. Our, we, we're uh, getting an update. We're getting an update. So evidently what we caught on the drone was not first place Ricky Russell, but second place Ricky Russell because it appears by spotters in the woods now, Johnny, that Trevor has taken the lead back over. Well, Trevor took the lead and there wasn't a rider in front of Ricky in that shot. So that means he must have at least a, a you know, three to five second gap, if not more, on Ricky. They were definitely not wheel to wheel when we saw them in that shot. So now we're being told by the track spotters, the 739 and Trevor Bollinger leading the way. Ricky Russell second. We do know Jordan Ashburn there in the third place spot. The fourth place ride uh, last we had seen was Josh Strang. Fifth, Craig DeLong was up, had also gotten around Toth. Toth in sixth and Grant Baylor in seventh. And that is your top seven as they run coming to complete lap number three. Got a few minutes left here before we'll see him, uh, but things are happening quickly and looks like that is Ricky Russell. So we must have missed Trevor Bollinger again. So this is where this gets complicated, folks. <laughs> what we're seeing on screen is what was our leader, Ricky Russell. Now we're being told that the Trevor Bollinger 739 Rockstar Husqvarna is out front leading the way on this one. And this is actually our second place rider, Ricky Russell. So we missed our leader through this section. Well, I got to tell you, hands down again to uh, and hats off to our drone operator this weekend. Uh, West uh, coming out of Florida, and uh, he's doing an amazing job of keeping uh, keeping up with these guys. You know, and, and and remarkably, you know, when we have less leaves on the trees, it would be a lot easier to do. But to be able to follow this race course with this much foliage on the tree, uh, it makes it uh, rather difficult. So good job. Sure. Yeah, you have to know your spots, and and I'm sure he's probably, I would assume, flying first person with this, or if not, just looking at his screen. You know, that can get very tough to keep your orientation. Uh, I personally flew a drone into a tree and all I was trying to do was follow a water truck that was doing <laughs> seven miles an hour. So I can't imagine trying to keep up with a factory uh, 450 that's, you know, doing upwards of 70 miles an hour on some of these straightaways. That looks like it is Bollinger there. Uh, so now we have our leader on screen. He's going to disappear here and again in a minute. But I believe that is the 739 Rockstar Husqvarna rider Trevor Bollinger leading the way and will be checking in here in about uh, three-ish minutes with uh, three laps complete. There he goes on our shot right there and pretty impressive. And as far as uh, timing and scoring, I was going to look to see if how close you were to right, John. <laughs> yeah, you sense those kind of things as a racer, I'm sure, don't you? I just know where they're at on the track, and I know what they have left. I mean, it was it was an educated guess, but it was truly just a guess. It's somewhere between two minutes and five minutes, but my guess would be around about three. I think we'll be seeing them complete. Around our 128 and change uh, would be my guess as to when they're com gonna complete lap number three. So looks like we should be waiting and seeing. Should and be there in is time, yeah. Trevor Bollinger on screen, coming around, rounding this fence corner and hard on the throttle, taking a look back over his shoulder. Where is the 212 of Ricky Russell? 
right there. Yep. So the gap is not huge, but he has definitely opened it up. You can tell by Ricky Russell just not sparing the throttle at all there. He does not want to let Trevor Bollinger get away. But whoa, look at that. That is the number three of Jordan Ashburn, who is now up to within sight of Ricky Russell. He has shaken his tail. He does not have Josh Strang directly behind him, but there is Strang not all that far behind. Where is the 342 of Craig DeLong? Things not quite as close as they were. Grant Baylor has now gotten around Craig DeLong and up to what would be the number five spot. Josh Strang, or I'm sorry, Josh Toth in sixth, and DeLong has now back dropped back to seven. And this is what we talked about earlier. When you've got this many riders this close together, one little miscue can drop you from third to seventh in the blink of an eye. Well, this is the uh, time of the race. It's approaching the hour and a half mark, and this is where we usually see the Grizzly come to life, and he is definitely doing that right now. Coming to life also, that man right there, Jordan Ashburn, a rider we've talked about, does not have an XC1 or an overall win to this point in his career. Has been number three multiple times. A consistent podium contender week in and week out, no matter the team he's on, the Brandy rides, the track conditions, you know, he is a podium contender, but has never gotten the win. Let's start talking about it, Rodney. Is today the day that Jordan Ashburn puts that Magna One Lubricants Husqvarna in the center of the box here at the Mason-Dixon GNCC? Well, I will say this, I know, and there are leaders, uh, our leader, I should say, Trevor Bollinger checking through there at the 11 mile marker, and, and it is kind of the talk, and it is the subject of the pits over. I spent some time with Chris and the folks at uh, Magna One Motorsports there yesterday, and a little on Friday, and, even though, you know, it's lighthearted uh, joking, Ricky Russell coming through in second, a little lighthearted joking, but some serious tones as well of, uh, you know, just trying to remind Jordan of what position he's in and, and, and what the possibilities that are looming for him right now are. And, and, and you know, he seems to take it in great stride. And, and right now he may be ready to tar start to try to take advantage of the circumstance. There's been a grumbling uh, for a few years now and it really kind of, the, the, the quiet grumblings in the background became the talk. This might be the opportunity that Jordan Ashburn almost must seize if he ever wants to win a GNCC. He's been a rider that he's Mr. Consistency. He's rock solid week in and week out. We've seen him come so close to winning so many of these races, but someone always finds a way to snatch it away from him, whether it be the final lap, the final corners, but some, some pretty heavy hitters into the industry, one of whom who may or may not have eight GNCC championships of his own, made the statement, he said, with, with Ben injured, with the way things are right now, with Stu kind of in and out, he said, as even as a lot of these guys are right now, he said, if Jordan doesn't get a win in this stretch of the season, he may never get one. And, you know, um, that's a very good analogy. And, and, and it's not to say, like, no. there is a list, there's a list of riders that are GNCC crates that have never gotten a GNCC yep. win, but I can confidently say none of those riders have finished on the overall podium for the year multiple times and never gotten a win. It's not, it's just one of those things, his consistency is what allows him to right. be in the top three year in and year out, but not taking those risks sometimes late in the race is what keeps him a podium contender. When's the last time you heard about Jordan Ashburn getting injured or having a big crash? He's Mr. Consistency, so, but sometimes you gotta take that risk, or as the kids say, send it, to try and get that win, and I think we need to see Jordan Ashburn hang it out a little bit if he wants a piece of this win today. Yeah, and anyone who wins today, uh, you have to send it. They, every one of these guys are going to do just that. I, I don't, I don't even continue. know what that means. I just say it because they hashtag it. <laughs> well, I, I think you like, do. Do, you, do right. you need a stamp to send it? <laughs> do, you, do you need a courier service? Like, how do you send it? You you send it through uh, through your attitude in racing and a twist of the throttle is exactly how you send it. All right. Well, I guess I've been Pony Expressing it. <laughs> well, Pony Express is not too bad. Yeah, well, not Pony Expressing it is this guy right here. He is on the fast track and uh, leading the way, the 739 of Trevor Bollinger coming in in this lap. We are going to see pit stops. That's all there is to it. We have to. These guys need some fuel. They can't go all day long. They're going to have to pull in here, top off these yep. race machines, and that is what we're seeing on the screen. Pulling into the Rockstar Husqvarna pits, the 739. Trevor Bollinger, fresh set of Scott goggles. Some fuel out of the IMS dump can. Taking a hydration bottle with a straw there. Tap on the back from his girlfriend, and he is on the way. Still leading. This Mason Dixon was not passed. Here comes, oh, this is still Bollinger now going the other way. <laughs> 
Well, you know, I was just thinking a little further about your anal analogy of Pony Express. I'm thinking that right now, Trevor Bollinger is sending it 5G, it looks like. <laughs> 5G LTE. There you go. <laughs> Ricky Russell there in the number two spot, also fueled up. Fresh God was on the way. Jordan Ashburn was a little bit further down there in the pits, but presumably he stopped as well at that Magna One Lubricants. Husqvarna tent and got himself fueled up, both himself and the machine. And now we are seeing these guys coming the other way. There he is, the 739 of Trevor Bollinger, hard on the throttle, trying to stretch out a gap between himself and the 212 Coastal Racing Gas Gas. Oh, again, overcooking that corner. That's a couple laps in a row there. The 342 of Craig DeLong gets some motivational speeches there from the team, telling him, hey, not doing so bad, but you know the podium's right there in front of you, so let's get it going. Let's get ourselves on that podium. Well, officially right now, after checking in with three laps complete, Bollinger with a 16.7 lead, second lead over Ricky Russell. Jordan Ashburn, another uh, 6.8 seconds back in the number three spot. Josh String, 13.8 seconds in fourth and fifth place. Grant Baylor now 2.9 seconds. He seems to be the rider on the move, at least at the moment. He turned a 31 minute flat lap time, which is uh, nearly the fastest lap. The only rider to turn one faster was uh, the uh, number three of Jordan Ashburn and Grant Baylor is uh, certainly uh, trying to make some things happen. We just got an update here via text from Stu Baylor who's watching from home. He says he was given word that Grant actually did pit last lap. So as close as he was to those guys in front of him, we'll have to watch from our drone he shot. He may here. have gotten a spot or he two. May, he may be up to the third place position as they run. Uh, potentially even second, as close as they were, but but I think we'll have to see. We didn't get it on camera, so but that's definitely something to watch out for. Thanks for the word from home there, Stu, saying he had heard or was told that Grant hit it last lap, meaning that uh, he may have grabbed that position, but I will tell you this, if Grant Baylor pit it on lap two, he's also gonna have to pit again on lap four or at least five. He will not be able to go the distance, so that those position gained if he's not able to open up enough of a gap, maybe lost in the next pit stop, but we'll see here. We'll keep watching our Yamaha Live drone and see if we can get a shot of these guys when they come out and see what the running order is here now on lap number four. Well, it's not the first time if pitting strategy comes into play uh, that those kind of strategies have paid some dividends uh, in the past for folks, and like you point out, oftentimes having to force yourself into a second pit stop, there is the 19 of Ryder Lafferty, it looks like, in for a pit stop there at the Coastal Pits now, Johnny. That was, last we knew, your XC2 class leader, uh, second place. Oh, it looks like... Liam Actually, yeah, Liam Draper has gotten around Ryder Lafferty, according to timing and scoring. Snodgrass uh, back there in the number three spot. Now the gap between... Uh, Draper and Lafferty was 10 seconds. Leader on screen, here is Trevor Bollinger leading the way from our Yamaha Live drone. Uh, we'll see what the gap is back to what we think will be the 212 of Ricky Russell. We did not see Grant Baylor pass when Ricky Russell was in the pits there. Uh, so we think it is still gonna be the 212 of Ricky Russell, and it is. There he is, the 212 Ricky Russell on screen in the P2 spot, uh, pushing, making some dust. Where will the Grizzly Grant fall in there? I think that was Ashburn that just went by. So that would be now your third place rider and still straying in fourth. So Grizzly Grant was not able to make up any spots there in the pits just yet, but he may have gotten a little closer to straying. We'll see when they check in here. We should have a shot of the full pack as they run coming up here in, well, here we go at the three mile marker. We should see these guys come by in order here. Well, I will point out when they came through the finish line, Grant was only 2.9 seconds behind Josh Strang. That gap would have opened up over that now if that be the case of what we saw there just a moment ago. Yeah, so perhaps maybe Grant did stop last lap, but maybe stopped again this lap for a splash, hoping to be able to go the distance or maybe needed, you know, a drink. Or, or again, could it be just Strang is hard on the throttle and was able to make up any time he would have lost hitting. Uh, Bollinger really wow. sending it uh, through that <laughs> 5G session there. LTE. 5G LTE send. Uh, we'll wait and watch. The next rider we see will be the 212 of Ricky Russell uh, pushing the pace but right now not able to make any inroads back towards the leader, Trevor Bollinger. There's Russell coming through now in the number two stop, spot, still about that 16, 17 second gap. And here comes third place, the number three of Jordan Ashburn. 
Ashburn's closed that gap up a little bit. That was about a seven, eight second gap. It's a little tighter now, it looks like. And here is the 114 of Strang and the 314 of the Grizzly, Grant Baylor. So those guys running right in formation. And that is your fifth and sixth place. Sorry, fourth and fifth place riders. Wow. That's impressive. Should be seeing Josh Toth come through next if it's not Craig DeLong. DeLong. Yeah. Craig DeLong has gotten back around Josh Toth after that little miscue he had at some point and dropped all the way back to seventh. And there is the 206 of Toth. So although running in seventh position, still absolutely within striking distance of a podium, seeming like he kind of lost something the last couple laps. So strong early was actually making gains on the front two. Then we saw that nine or 10 seconds open up to 29. And since then, it's kind of been I don't know that he's lost a bunch more time, but he's lost four positions in the span of the last lap and a half. Yeah, so uh, tough breaks there, that's for sure. Uh, and it, you gotta wonder what kind of things can throw your pace off. I mean, like you said, you know, you talked about this course and, 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 and funny that you say what his lappers do not really Everybody <laughs> is coming through there in the middle of their own battle. You got three, four guys. They're all battling over position. Suddenly they're seeing a wheel. They're thinking it's somebody in their class that they're battling with. They're throwing elbows. And Trevor Bollinger's just saying, guys, uh, I would like to win a GNCC. I've never done that before. And uh, I think today I'd like to do that. Could you please let me through? <laughs> so there they go trying to to make that happen uh, and all the while what's that doing that's that, that is allowing uh, ricky russell to regain some of that, that that lost ground out there but what we were saying about the course i brought a kid that's never really been to a gncc with my son their tramp bait wow they are all over each other but he said the one thing he said after walking trail he says there's nothing hard about that track <laughs> yeah. i laughed at him and said well under race conditions buddy it's going to be a little bit different but yeah this is does seeming to be one of the more tame ones, but it is challenging. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's a couple sections. I don't know that he walked the whole track. It I don't think he did. Nothing <laughs> challenging, uh, because there's definitely some ravines and, and sections that unless, uh, you know, unless he's a closet hard enduro rider, you know, there's definitely some climbs that, that any novice or any intermediate rider could could mess up on pretty easily. And heck, we even see sometimes our top pro riders, a little miscue, and next thing you know, you're turning around and taking another run at it. No doubt about it. I tell you, we got ourselves a good one here today. Johnny Gallagher as Trevor Bollinger continues to lead Ricky Russell, Jordan Ashburn closing in from third, and Josh Strang and Grant Baylor basically wheel to wheel right now. So the top five guys all well within contention. The big question is, who will come out on top? Will Trevor Bollinger pull the trigger on this one and take home the win? Stick around to find out. GNCC Live continues after this. Born of family values and a homegrown work ethic, Kometic Gaskets seals your machine so you can focus on the finish line. Kometic Gaskets are the competitive standard for racers who demand the very best. Kometic Gaskets are constructed from superior materials designed to perform in the most demanding environment. Whether it's championships on the line or a day in the dirt with friends, professionals and enthusiasts depend on Kometic. Kometic Gaskets sealing championships since 1989. Amsoil runs on freedom and has since 1972. We punish our products firsthand in our world-class laboratories and beyond because some things can't be learned from a test tube. Run with us. Naughty Tires, a division of Greenball Corp, has been in the tire business for over 44 years. We're passionate about developing quality tires that perform great and bring extraordinary value to our customers. a tire that can handle your off-road adventures, need a reliable tire to take you from job site to job site, or simply want a tire with a beefier look that won't break the bank, then check out Kanadi Tires.
Good morning. My name is John Coffey. I'm an AMSOIL dealer from Southern Virginia. Today's AMSOIL Spotlight it is on our beautiful, easy and convenient Easy Packs. We have these for transmission fluids, differential fluids, and you talk about something that's super, super easy to change the differential fluid. In fact, I upgraded mine this week here. I freshened it up. It took me longer to drain the old stuff out. And then you can take this in any position. You can put it in, squeeze it out, and in about 30 seconds, you've drained that into whatever you're trying to fill back up again. Again, we have them for differential fluids, transmission fluids. We have them for ATVs, UTVs, Polaris, Pan Am. Uh, we've got special transmission fluids uh, as well. So no matter what position that you need to be in, these, these will take care of that. And they're super, super strong. You don't have to worry about them bursting or anything. And in fact, I, they're just amazing, really. USMCA has been connecting riders to certified coaches since 2016. There are over 300 active certified coaches on MotorcycleCoaching.org, and we recently launched our new mobile app, making it easy to connect with a coach and book your next training session. So here's what you do. Download the Motorcycle Coaching app, then search for coaches in upcoming classes. Once a training session is booked, riders have the option to pay for their class and even get a calendar reminder that will automatically sync to their phone. Get connected today. And welcome back to GNCC Live. Rodney Tomlin, Johnny Gallagher, Mikey Waynes, and now joined in studio with uh, King of the Blackwater himself, Mark Hyde, as we take a look at recap from last night's Stasic Racing, which KTM has a lot to do and be involved in in this one. And, of course, youngsters from all around the region once again converged on the GNCC Racing Nation and several classes of kids as young as one up to, what, five, six years old, I think they are. They're running. There goes Crew Russell there. It's, uh, he was one of the uh, front runners out there last night. Many of them. I like this. They, 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 some of these kids are riding Striders. Some are riding Stasics. But the great thing about it is they're all hungry to compete out there. Well, actually, those are all Stasics. Some of them are just riding them like they're Striders. Well, I've seen some Striders yeah. out there. Too, yeah. so. they, typically, I think they try to separate those. But that was actually a Stasic, and the, the kid just wasn't quite following the concept of <laughs> twist the throttle. They're like, oh, well, my other one, I use my legs and pedal. But, yeah, exciting and uh, high intensity, man. I, I almost think at times the parents get into it more than the kids do. <laughs> you know what amazes me most, guys, is how race-minded a two-year-old kid really is. It's, it's like he knows he wants to go out and win and he wants to race and he wants to stick that wheel in on those guys. It, it's crazy how aggressive a two-year-old kid is. <laughs> Especially if he has a four-year-old brother. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. That helps a lot, I'm quite sure. And all he hears dad talk about on the way home from the races is how he should have made that pass or this, that, or the other thing. And you know, it's it definitely is passed down through generations. <laughs> for sure. Waiting on the leaders at the eight. This has been a uh, kind of exciting place to wait uh, over the last couple of laps we've seen. A lead change that one time, and of course we've seen things tighten back up. And you know, it tells a little story for us. Uh, a good four or so mile gap there between the last time we see him, Johnny, and uh, it, a lot of unanswered questions for us. But uh, definitely, I think uh, makes it exciting as well. Makes it exciting. Uh, obviously, we have this time where we don't see them, but also the part where we're not seeing them is kind of a remote part of the racetrack. Difficult to get a camera back there, and also probably the most intense section of the racetrack. There's a lot of ravines, a lot of slick stuff, a lot of multi-line sections down in there, and it's so easy to make or lose time through there that uh, that's why I think we've seen the shakeups that we have and, and saw the same this morning in the morning race. Um, this is the part of the racetrack where things really get interesting. Mark, you said you had a chance to ride it as uh, Trevor Bollinger checks in. I uh, had a chance to ride this uh, yourself on Friday. Yeah, Friday was a big change from today because we had the big rains Thursday night, and I really thought the fields would be dried out and the woods would be pretty pretty perfect. Uh, but it's changed around a lot. The, the woods, I think, are pretty ideal, but it's a little dusty and fast and really got high speed in some places. 
Ricky Russell going through there and the number two spot again. Bollinger there ahead. It looks like he's still at that 16, maybe as much as 20 second lead. Jordan Ashburn hasn't really seemed to close the gap up much. Yeah, Doesn't he, seem lost, to, he lost time. Yeah, it looks like he's not riding with near as much aggression right there. Yeah. And this race too, this is what I expected. Ooh, out of, no, yeah, <laughs> Strang is getting after him and uh, um, Baylor right to wheel to wheel right there. So those guys got a heck of a race going on. But this is, you know, we're starting to see, I think, the urgency with Ashburn and Trevor Bollinger. Those are the guys that really need to make stuff happen in this three-race span. You, you don't know what's going to happen with Ben Kelly. I'm sure you guys have talked about it earlier, but uh, it's still out there. You know, will he be back? Will he not be back? And uh, But it's a long time. If uh, It'd be interesting if uh, we got done with this, got to the break, and uh, Ben was still right near the lead. But this is when, you know, I really thought I'd see a lot of intensity out of Ashburn and Bollinger because, man, you couldn't have for a better opportunity than they have in these, this three-race stretch. And, and that's something we haven't really talked about on the show so far today. We have talked about the fact of, of Ben being gone, kind of opening up the opportunity for wins. Um, not that he's just handed these wins when he gets here, but he kind of had established himself as more than the man to beat. He was kind of the man that couldn't lose. Uh, and obviously now that not only opens up the opportunity for these guys for an extra spot on the podium for a win, but, Mark, like you mentioned, a championship. You know, we don't know what's going to happen with Ben Kelly. 65-point lead with three rounds. There's 90 points on the table. Obviously, last round, Josh Strang taking the lion's share of those points, not being in the championship hunt, almost helped Ben Kelly out in a way. Quite Ricky good. Russell taking second place, another rider not in the championship battle. So that knocked it all the way down to 21 points. So that was a free nine points that Ben kind of earned sitting at home because those guys took those nine points off the board. He only needs to earn 15. I'm, I'm making air quotes the folks at home can't see. <laughs> but if someone takes, you know, 15 points off the table, suddenly he's within 10 points or less of the lead uh, coming back from, uh, you know, coming back from the break. Yep. Yeah. And today, too, I think what's going to play into the cards is the track with it has dried out the way it has, still good moisture in the woods, but the racing speed is going to be a lot more intense. It's not like two weeks ago where, you know, Strang just rode, put on a clinic, you know, a lot of th throttle control, a lot of line selection. Where here it's going to be a lot more aggressive racing. And the sun is out. And I think it's going to be just warm enough today. That last hour, the training and is going to set in. And you see the guys that aren't trained, they're going to start backing her down a little bit. XC2 leader just came through. That is the 198 of Liam Draper starting to open things up a little bit over this guy right here, the 19 of... Ryder Lafferty and the 178 of Lyndon Snodgrass. So that is one, two, and three now through in that XC2 class. And uh, was the 282 of Witkowski here last lap. Don't know what they checked in uh, at the finish line, but Witkowski was pretty close to the final podium position. But uh, now it looks like he has definitely dropped off the pace of those three yeah, front runners. Right there just before the finish. And we saw him, and he wasn't too far back, but he's actually dropped uh, well behind Burbosa, who was 30 seconds behind Snodgrass. Witkowski back there nearly 30 seconds behind Barbosa now. So dropping all the way back to that number five spot. So we should be watching for the 14 Phoenix Honda of Rui Barbosa in the fourth place spot. But I tell you right now, with the gap that's opened up, I think this is turning out. Mine's a miscue for one of those top three. I think the top three in the XT2 are pretty well set. Uh, they've got a big gap over this guy right here, but still a solid ride for the 14 Phoenix Honda of Rui Barbosa and a lot of racing action left. You can see it looked like that might have been David Eller himself up there, the team owner, cheering those guys on. So he might have a lot of irons in the fire, but he makes time to get out into the woods and, and motivate these guys. And when you see the boss, like the actual <laughs> boss out there in the woods, uh, you know, it's a little bit extra pep in your step. And, and even if you're not going fast, you want to make sure you downshift and rev the bike a lot so it seems like you're trying hard. I will say this, man, the camaraderie on that team between ownership and riders is uh, – um, very unique, I will say that. I mean, David runs a strict team, there's no doubt about it, but he also runs a fun team for those guys to be able to be themselves on as well. As we were going to cutting away from that shot, that was the 981 of Jonathan Johnson coming through there, so it looks like Wachowski has now dropped back even further, uh, back to at least the sixth place spot in that XC2. So a rider who's vying for that championship here in 2022, uh, losing some valuable points to the points leader, Lyndon Snodgrass, who's currently running in the third spot and putting pressure on Ryder Lafferty for that number two position as they run right now. 
Yeah, that XC2 class has really gotten interesting. You know, a lot of different mixes in the podium week in, week out. And uh, you expect that. Those young kids, that they're, they're hungry. They're getting after it. But when you kind of ride that way, mistakes happen. And that kind of flips things around big time in that class. And Rodney, while we have a minute here, something, a, a thought you started on earlier, and it just popped back into my head when Mark was talking about that. You mentioned uh, Johnny Girard having uh, showed up and raced the, the sprint right. enduro last weekend, the U.S. sprint, uh, actually taking the overall win. Um, Winning day one, uh, Lane Michael was able to take the o the day win on day two, but Johnny grabbed the overall with the combined between the two days. And uh, you said, I thought maybe we'd see him out here this weekend. I actually talked to Johnny this week, and, and he said he was hoping to see him out here this weekend, but everyone around him uh, really kind of reminding him that GNCC is a lot different from, you know, sprint racing where he just has to go out and lay down a fast time, uh, you know, essentially six times a day for a maximum of eight to nine minutes. Uh, we're here, it's three hours of pounding. Obviously his body, just between the injuries and, and the lack of training that he had and lack of seat time there for a while. And he did say, he said, look, man, I felt good. Um, I, I, I do feel good, he said, but I, I could definitely still feel that I wasn't 100%. So I'm going to listen to the guys that are a lot smarter than me. I'm a stupid dirt bike racer. I want to go fast, but I'm, I'm going to – I do think we may see him at Snowshoe, though, with another three weeks' time. Well, the beauty of it, too, about Johnny is that he's still got a, 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 a life uh, – his career still got a lot of life in it. So uh, the best thing to do for him is to do just that, is position him for the long haul and not let him overexert or hurt himself more than what he should at this particular point in his career. Yeah, absolutely. He's got to play the long game and, and, and know that, you know, he's got a bright future ahead of him. And it, and it sounds like he's listening to, you know, there's a guy that, that runs things over just pits by the name of Barry Hawk that knows a <laughs> thing or two about winning GNCC races and championships. And uh, I think between that and his trainer, uh, trainers, Jacob Fetty and, and Caleb Russell, I think uh, they all kind of concurred that, you know, hey, let Johnny's great, but we need to keep a leash on him, and he's not fighting. He's saying, okay, you guys know what's best. I'm, I'm going to listen to you. And, and you know, that that's kind of a, a neat uh, perspective for these riders to, to be under. Instead of being under that pressure of expected, you know, to, to rebound back as quick as possible and get in that championship contention and start winning races as quick as you can. I mean, that says a lot about, uh, like you said, the team to be able to, to see the future in this in the long haul and, and what the big picture in this all is. Yeah, and you've, we've seen the, the just sport, the knowledge that has been gained over the years. You've seen guys rush back and what happens to them and, yeah. you know, the season's kind of a wash for him now. He's he's a proven winner, so it's like, hey, get 100% because, you know, if he goes out there and they, these guys put the hammer on him because he's not in shape, then mentally he's going to get down, so like, hey, let's get you back to you where you want to be 100% and make this thing happen the right way. We did get an update from our producers there, Rodney, that we have a new second place rider. Jordan Ashburn has made the pass on Ricky Russell. Uh, whether or not he can kind of bridge that gap that, that uh, right now your leader, Trevor Bollinger, is starting to build up. We'll see when they when they come through these shots coming up. But uh, it is the number three Magna One Motorsports lubricants of the Jordan Ashburn. Husqvarna there that has now worked his way into the number two spot. And though it may not be the win that everybody keeps pushing for and talking about, we do have to say that it's one step forward that, that uh, puts Jordan maybe a little bit closer in the next rounds. But hey, again, hey, man, we still got two laps of racing left. And, and it's not like as much as I don't have a horse in this race, I, I would love to see Trevor Bollinger get his first win. I would love to see Jordan Ashburn get Absolutely. his first win. I'm I'd love to see Ricky Russell get a win. I'd love to see I'd love to Absolutely. see any of these guys get a win. But I think it's a little bit more exciting storyline now with the guy who wants to grab that first championship. Well, both of these guys vying not only for – you know, potentially a championship at the end of the year, but a win today. Neither one of them have ever won either. And, you know, they've not gotten away from Ricky Russell. He's still right there. But Ricky at least has that win in his back pocket from a few years ago. Absolutely. Good point. Yep. Yeah, and these guys, too, they're the ones that need to make the most of these three races. Here here we got uh, Trevor Bollinger Trevor going by there for us in, in the lead. And he's riding a strong race. And it reminds me of Crawfordsville earlier this year. It was... He really came on strong in that last lap and got Josh Toth like a mile or two from the finish to you know, move up one spot on the podium there. So Trevor, uh, he's got the pieces. He's a former XC2 champion, so he knows what it takes to win. And like I said, this is what I was expecting out of him and Jordan Ashburn, the two of them here. Oh, there's Ricky Russell. So did we, I don't know if we missed 
I don't think we missed I Ashburn, so I did. think Ricky has now gotten back around Jordan Ashburn and back up into that number two spot and actually opened up a bit of a gap. Uh, over it now. That was the too bright of a helmet. Jordan doesn't wear that helmet anymore. Uh, that would have been him uh, in previous years, but he's not wearing that bright helmet that we learned to love because we could always, always pick out, uh, pick out Jordan Ashburn. So, um, yeah, Ashburn back there in the third place spot. So either spotter error or there's been some mix up and, and passes forth and passes back. And, and Ricky Russell, I'm expecting a lot of things out of him recently, too, because he had a real strong ride at the Missouri National Enduro, the best ride he ever had, second overall, second overall at the John Penton. So things are trending in his his direction. So I know he's got a lot of confidence. And it's, it's weird, too, when a guy goes out like a Ben Kelly. You know, we've seen it in other forms of racing. The year um, James Stewart went out on motocross, the next moto, everybody's lap times went up two to three seconds. So now... All these guys think, hey, Ben's out. It's my turn to win. And so you're going to see, I think, a lot more aggressive riding from these guys that haven't won in the past now that they, they really feel confident that they're riding with guys that they can beat. And, and we've talked about this before, too. You know, not a lot of guys have the uh, mental strength or the fortitude that it takes to push yourself to 100% when you're battling for 7th, 8th, ninth, 10th. Like, it, it, it's hard to do because you're not when you come across the podium or when you come across the finish line there's not going to be a microphone in your face you're not going to get to thank your sponsors you know it, you're just going back to the truck and the only thing you have to take away from it is the points but honestly it's the sense of accomplishment that you have for yourself no one's going to come running up to you high five and you when you get eighth it just doesn't work that way so a lot of guys kind of really need that affirmation, that reassurance that they're important and they matter. And when they have the opportunity to be on the podium or battle for a win, they're willing to dig deeper. Yep. And the cool thing is, too, when the top guy does come back, do, do they have so much confidence now that they don't care anymore? It's like, oh, yeah, I, I don't care who's here. I'm going to still win these races. So that'll also be, you know, they just went by again, Bollinger and then Ricky Russell. So, yeah, we have not seen Jordan Ashburn in that second-place position. So he has dropped back at least to third place at this point in the race. Yep, and Ricky has closed that gap up to Jordan a or to uh, Trevor Bollinger for sure. He's getting closer and closer. So what looked like it might start to become a Trevor Bollinger runaway, there is Ashburn there. So still in that third-place ride. Uh, but look at this, Grant Baylor up to wow. fourth. Grant? Not really looking like he was charging there, but sometimes that's Grant's style. You know, I think he took that corner in seventh gear and then downshifted to sixth when he came out of it. But uh, not a lot of wheel spin, not a lot of hopping around on the course like we see some of the riders in front of him. But it's obviously working for him because he was in seventh a lap ago. Now he's in fourth and he can see Jordan Ashburn in third. Look at this, Ricky Russell inching ever closer to the rear fender of Trevor Bollinger on that 739 machine. Yeah, this is going to be really interesting because, like I said, we still got over two laps of racing to go here, and it's going to be pretty exciting. And, again, I think conditioning is really kind of going to come into play today because I think the pace has been extremely strong because of the conditions of the race course, and we have just enough heat and sunshine out there. I think it's going to zap these guys more than a lot of people thought when we got up this morning and it was 50 degrees out. Yeah, I mean, 80 degrees is the high here today in uh, Dillner, Pennsylvania, where we're sitting, or at least that's where the weather app says. We like to say High Point, Pennsylvania. But uh, 80 degrees is the high here, and the high is, well, right now. Uh, so these guys are out there trudging through these conditions, trying to stay hydrated, uh, trying to keep the pace up. There is your leader, Trevor Bollinger. We'll see. It was 13, 59, 13 when he left the shot there. We'll wait and see what it is when Ricky Russell comes by. It's been 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, about 11 seconds is what it is back to Ricky Russell. So from That's a little 16, time, 17 seconds down to 11, Ricky Russell making up about five seconds in the last couple of miles of this uh, this race course here and, and inching closer. They're going to see each other in the finish line. Chicane's coming up here in just a moment. Well, we're talking there as uh, Jordan Ashburn makes his way by. We should see uh, Grant Baylor coming. There he there is. There he is on the trail. Oh, now he looks like he's pushing. <laughs> hey, I do want to point out, we talked about the 250A class earlier, and Bubs Tasha's Josh Strange makes his way by. A little bit of a change in that one now as uh, we have a new leader in the 250A class, Grant Davis up to 14th place overall. Trevor Maley is 21st overall and second in that 250A class, and it looks like that uh, Bubs Tasha Third place in class now, 24th overall, just to give you an idea how things are shaping up there for those guys. And as far as the FMF XC3 125 Pro-Am class, Zach Hayes leading Brody Johnson. Two and a half second battle between those two. They've got a good one going on. Another 25 seconds back to third place ride in that class, Jake Froman. You know, just for a little perspective here, as I watch these guys come across at, at two hours and 
you know, two hours even in 30 seconds. Uh, you know, Dave's still got another hour of racing left. And as a career lifelong ATV racer, you know, our, our races are two hours long. We've talked about this before. There is a, in my opinion, and I've raced both, never obviously at the highest levels on a motorcycle. There is a huge difference between the abuse that your body takes on an ATV versus a motorcycle. But the mental aspect of it, to me, wouldn't be all that different. So, Mark, you know, as a, as a racer who has dozens and dozens and hundreds and thousands of three-hour races under your belt, what's it, you know, what's it like at the two-hour mark? I mean, obviously, you're prepared ahead of time knowing you have a three-hour race, but you know, I've done a few races where I raced that long, you know, three, four hours consecutively. And, and for me, not being used to it, it was, even when you go in knowing it's three hours, when, when, you know, you come in and you're like, man, I'm two hours into this thing, you're fatigued mentally, maybe even more so than physically. How do you refocus yourself for that last hour? Well, the big thing is going to be, like we talked about earlier, that your position on the track. If you're up there in that front group or, or you have people with you that were racing, that was the cool thing, you know, with the John Penton that I, I love so much is and i love racing with somebody you know when you're out there in front that last hour can really drag but you know mentally these guys have done enough but uh the big thing is i struggled more with the one hour to two hour because then once i got the two hour i'm like oh i got two lap cards out i got two laps in me that's and especially you know you you, you plan for it, you train for it you, you make your calculations based on what's you're expecting to happen throughout the day so these last two laps for trevor bollinger are going to be a lot longer than they are for Ricky Russell and the rest of the guys because he's been up there pretty much on point most of the day. And, uh, you know, being the fact that he's never won a GNCC, that also, I know the first time I won a GNCC, it's like, I'm sitting there, it's like, you know, come on, where's that checkered flag? Where's that checkered flag? Where's that checkered flag? So, you know, a lot of that with that front group is I think gonna, gonna play out a lot because there's not a lot of victories in that front group. So that's gonna be a big, big thing and, and have, they put out a ton of energy and, you know, how much do they have left? But I think from what I saw in Trevor, you know, at Crawfordsville and Ricky Russell that uh, I've seen the last three races, those guys I think are good to go to the finish, but uh, they will be highly motivated at this point in the race and in their career to keep it down. But the biggest thing for them is not to let their mind wander and really focus. And that's a big thing I tell, tell kids and stuff when you're racing like this, don't focus on two laps. You know, just you got to dissect the track and attack each section and stay focused because when you start you know thinking about other things that's when you hit something and, and things go wrong or, or you make a mistake or you come up on a lapped rider and you don't make a smart decision because that's another thing with lapped riders a lot of times you're coming up to them and you're thinking oh ricky russell's right behind me i gotta go gotta go and you try to execute a pass where you shouldn't or if you'd have given it another half second or a second it would have been a much cleaner pass and I've seen, you know, and been in situations like that that's gotten me in trouble or seen people get in trouble. So that's where the mental part and the fatigue sets in. And you can't let those things get the best of you. And, you know, you talked about four-wheeler, Johnny. It's like you guys are technically riding a four-hour four race when you're two-hour race because you get <laughs> twice as much stuff as a motorcycle. I'll tell you what, some days. Yesterday wasn't so bad. It was a great track. Didn't get yeah. super rough. But there are some days where that two hours feels like four 12 yeah. you know it's uh yeah when, uh, the thing I, and I, we've talked about this before a lot uh, when you're on a bike you can kind of move around in the track because obviously the entire track is is it is an atv wide which is essentially two dirt bikes uh here is your third place rider jordan ashburn ricky russell still there in second um but yeah these guys can kind of hop around set up for corners differently uh and even in the tighter woods like we can obviously move around in the fields in the open sections and you know straddle the ruts and that kind of stuff to save some abuse on the machine in our bodies but once you're in between the trees, most of, I would say, you know, 90 plus percent of the woods on these, on most of these courses is, it's fairly one lined, or if there is two lines that are both rough, like you just have to ride the ruts. You don't have a choice to really kind of hop around. Um, so it's a lot of abuse for sure, but GNCC racing is abusive mentally and physically. And, and I say that as, you know, and, and I've talked about this in recent weeks with people, it's my, um, and Mark, you would have a unique perspective on this as well. Um, having been at this longer than me, started well before me. In recent years, I think the, this, specifically this type of racing, as well as all racing, and it probably stemmed from a lot of what happened in motocross in the, in the 90s and 2000 with Ricky Carmichael and guys like that. This has become more of an athletic competition than it has a motorsports competition. It used to be, you know, bike setup, race tactic, that kind of stuff. All those things, for sure, still big components of this. But the ability to be able to push yourself at near max heart rates for, in this case, 180 minutes, 
you know, if you tell professional athletes that, they would tell you, you're crazy, you can't do that, it's not possible, why are you even talking about this? And then Caleb Russell, Thad, and all these guys post their heart rates after a race and say, you know, yeah, I was 185 plus for three hours. And people are like, well, they must have, you know, messed with their sense or something because it's not possible. I mean, these guys are absolutely redlined the entire time. Yeah, and a lot of that too with, you talk about the nutrition, the physical training. I mean, it's such a science to it now that we didn't have back when I was racing. And another thing too is the motorcycles. The motorcycles are so good now, but again, it lets guys go faster and faster. So it's still relevant. But there were times, you know, when I was racing where you had to be concerned about your motorcycle finishing. Sure. Where nowadays that's really, unless you have something really odd happen, that, that just doesn't happen anymore. Yeah, I used to race a 250R. <laughs> about half of them in the pro class would finish every race. Uh, you know, it's just, when you're trying to push old technology, it, yeah. it's hard to, um, when I say old technology, that was what it was available at the time. The sport wasn't really evolving at that point. Uh, and then obviously the manufacturers got back involved and, and gave us some new stuff. And, and now we can actually wring these things necks for two hours and they're not going to break. Yeah. Um, you know, they're well built. But there is your leader, Trevor Bollinger, on screen. Definitely not worried about his motorcycle making it. He's just worried about trying to grab his first win. And, man, I know I don't have a microphone, but if I did... Ricky Russell has closed it up even further now. That's not 11 seconds. That's a little closer. Yeah. Um, if I could get into Trevor Bollinger's helmet, I would say, buddy, don't think about the win. Hit your marks and ride your laps. You don't want to carry the weight of that for the next two laps. Yeah. And the nice thing about today with the guys and their bike setups is unlike some of the situations we had uh, previously, the uh, the um, your bike setup is much more consistent today. Boy, Grant Baylor, he uh, looks like he's reeling in Jordan Ashburn here, and we could have a... A couple different battles well, on the racetrack. Actually, Mark, yeah. it looks like that stretch back. Yeah, yeah. he was he was oh. actually in the last shot. He was right on the rear wheel of Ashburn. Now he's he's not super far back, but Josh Strang's still there as well. And here's Craig DeLong. Wow. So that final podium position, far from over. And honestly, yeah. any one of these guys with a few mistakes or, or potentially things, the pace kind of getting slowed up at the front if they get into a battle. Any one of these guys is realistically still in the shot for a win, but definitely for a podium. Yeah, but again, the track conditions, I think they're so consistent today that the bike setups, whoever nailed their bike setup today, that last hour, that, that's another thing that makes a huge difference. Because I know when I worked with Rodney Smith, that guy was an unbelievable tester, and his bike was always so good. So, you know, that helped him a lot those first two hours. So then that last hour, he was able to really push push the limits when he had to. And, and he was one of those, like I said, a super smart racer where he would sit on a guy's rear wheel or the front pack's rear wheel. As long as he was in touch with the leader, he was happy because he knew where his bike worked, where it didn't work. And uh, he was amazing the last couple of laps of races. And uh, that's the cool thing about today is because we don't have that guy out there right now. Uh, we've got a lot of guys looking for their first win, their second win. And so, so that makes racing really cool too. So Ricky Russell, man, he looks like he's inching up there yeah. on Trevor. So this could be the quite interesting as we get closer here to the end. Yeah. And Mark, you mentioned bike setup, and I gotta tell you what I'm seeing here. On screen, it looks to me like the top two there, Ricky Russell in second and Trevor Bollinger leading, their bikes look nervous to me. It looks like they're making a lot of adjustments to hit the ruts, they're doing a lot of bouncing. Grant Baylor and, and Jordan Ashburn both kind of look like they're just more, <clears throat> whether it's their riding or their bike setup, it seems like they're more settled into the track. Not that they're going faster, and Josh Strang as well. Josh Strang's bike looks very settled. Seems like he's getting good grip, not bouncing around nearly as much. So that comes back to what you were talking about with the bike setup factoring into how much energy you're using. Yeah, it, it makes a big difference. And again, you've got some young kids out front too that don't have that experience. Sometimes they're relying on their teammates. And with Josh Strang, we saw what he did in Ohio. And I didn't mention back then, I should have, but... Uh, with uh, Fred Andrews and Joey Maurer, his mechanic and the team manager, there's a ton of knowledge there, so he can get a lot of valuable information. And uh, maybe those guys at the front pack don't have that, and that's what you're seeing in their bike setups. Well, the battles are waging on. We are now nearly two hours and 10 minutes in a three hour race and still a lot of unanswered questions. Will someone walk away with their first win of their career today or will someone play spoiler? Stick around to find out. GNCC Live continues from the Mason Dixon after this. Even when you're the best, you never stop striving to be better. With over 40 years of experience in motorcycle sales and service, we know racing. Our inventory of Yamaha motorcycles, sport bikes, dirt bikes, ATVs, and side-by-sides is extensive and constantly changing. Stop by Low Jack Cycle Sales today in Tarentum, Pennsylvania. 
and visit our online inventory at www.lojax.com. Yamaha YZ, it's why we ride. How would you like to go to a school where we take into consideration how students learn best? Well, we do that. Because we find if we can build the curriculum around the things you are interested in, you're going to do a better job. The mission at On Track School is that educational success is possible while chasing your dreams. Not only will our staff help students to achieve success, they will cheer you on to the finish line. We encourage you to check out On Track School at ontrackschool.com, where we can help you chase your dreams and still get a quality education. Check it out. Brown's RV Superstore is family owned and operated and stake their reputation on offering you the finest RVs available in their McBee, South Carolina RV dealership. Brown's RV Superstore carries motor homes, fifth wheels, travel trailers, and toy haulers and keep a huge inventory of new and used RVs in stock for you to choose from. They offer top dollar for your RV trade-in and help you get the RV financing you need. As a part of the GNCC family, Brown's RV Superstore in partnership with Vengeance Toy Haulers offers sponsorship packages for every level of racer with discounts and continued savings on your new toy hauler. Brown's RV Superstore has dedicated themselves to complete customer satisfaction, specializing in providing a positive start to your RV adventure. They look forward to customers coming back to share their tales from the road. Call Brown's RV Superstore today at 877-805-3658 or visit their website at brownsrvsuperstore.com, where family fun begins. Amsoil runs on freedom and has since 1972. We punish our products firsthand in our world-class laboratories and beyond because some things can't be learned from a test tube. Run with us. Last season was my best season ever by far. I won a lot of races, I won a championship, and it was my, also my first year using Arma. And one of the things I noticed was just my ability to string good days together. You know, like especially in the summertime in Florida where you're riding every day and the heat index is 108 degrees and you're doing 230s and going to the gym and bicycle and, and all that stuff. I think in the past I've been super inconsistent day to day. Yeah, I may have a you know a good race here or you know a good day during the week there, but overall I think where I improved the most was my consistency and my recovery. Welcome back to GNCC Live on RacerTV.com as we take a look at some highlights from some of the past Yamaha Riding University experiences, which is scheduled once again for Snowshoe Mountain Resort here coming up the week prior to the Snowshoe GNCC. And riders have the opportunity to learn from, well, some of the seasoned best off-road racers, guys like, well, Johnny Gallagher, in particular, on the ATV side of things. I think Stu Baylor and uh, a few other folks are going to be involved as well, Johnny, as uh, basically all the Blue Crew riders uh, showing up in full force for that one, it sounds like. Yeah, absolutely. We've got the whole Ampro, uh, Ampro Yamaha team there, uh, the Range Riding University crew, and then uh, obviously all the ATV contingent as well. And uh, we also had a little special event last night with the Mowgli Memorial 7th Annual dog show here and uh they had an obstacle course set up that that turned into uh <laughs> I, I was having a hard time keeping just keeping focused on anything listening to tim cotter announce this event oh, last night it was night. hilarious uh, that right there was gold right there if you you got your price of admission last night was at the dog show just from the comedy from tim cotter <laughs> Now, dogs, uh, man, I, I think they, they went for like two and a half hours last night. It's one of the largest kennel club, GNCC kennel club dog shows we've ever had. And uh, just lots of smiles. Uh, you saw there a couple of chihuahuas. Uh, they're actually husband and wife, believe it or not. They uh, 
They <laughs> have had several families together and uh, several little litters together. They're now retired at about 12 and 13 years old. You don't want to get too close to them. They do like to bite. <laughs> Typical chihuahua. <laughs> and little little dog syndrome. Little dog syndrome, yeah. And uh, and they're old grouchy on top of it. <laughs> grouchy little, little dog. <laughs> Here at the 8-mile marker, we're waiting on the leaders. <clears throat> Last we knew, still, Trevor Bollinger on that 739. Rockstar Husvarna leading the way. Pushing the pace behind him, though, getting super close to... His rear wheel is Ricky Russell, and it's been really, honestly, a seesaw battle back and forth between these guys. Trevor Bollinger with the early lead, leading the way. Ricky Russell wrestles it away. Looks like he starts to pull away a little bit. Wheel. Next thing we know, Trevor Bollinger gets back, and from what we just got the update, Rodney. It's a wheel-to-wheel -wheel battle now. As things has closed up, according to the reports that we're getting, and as they make their way, nope, that's not them. That guy's fooled me, I think, the last two laps coming through there just before the leaders or right around the time of the leaders. And we wait at the monster mile. Baylor has gotten around. Jordan Ashburn is what we are uh, hearing now. There is uh, Tro Bollinger and there is Ricky Russell. And they are basically nose to tail now as they make their way past the eight at the monster mile. Yeah. And, you know, on a day like today, right now, uh, I think Ricky Russell is kind of in the driver's seat because he was able to reel Trevor in, whether Trevor had a, a mistake, got some lap riders, whatever the case may be, all Ricky knows is that he caught him, and that's going to do a lot for him. And there's Ashburn, Ashburn back, back around, in, yeah. back into third place. But uh, and the nice we, thing we got to work on our spotters. Yeah. We're getting bad intel. <laughs> the Grant's Grant's still close. Yep. And uh, with uh, Ricky Russell there now. He's got a little bit of time he could actually sit on Trevor Bollinger and see if he's doing anything special that he could pick up on. Or, you know, maybe like we talked for the last race, you know, every rider out there knows place on the track where he's got a special something tucked away. And uh, if Ricky has it, he's going to have to use it here shortly. And, and I'll tell you what, in my opinion, you know, Ricky Russell being in the catbird seat allows him to conserve so much energy, not just physical energy, but mental energy, leading, having to be the first one to get by the lappers, having to pick the lines. There's not a lot of um, super technical stuff on this track where line choice is, is crazy important, but you can just sit in somebody's shadow and get in that mental draft. And if I'm Ricky Russell, unless I start feeling pressure from behind from Jordan Ashburn, which right now there really isn't, I'm not even going to consider making a pass on Trevor Bollinger unless he basically makes a mistake and gives it to me. Um, unless, I mean, there's a lot of factors that come into it. Unless Ricky's so confident that he feels he can make the pass and pull away, why give Bollinger the opportunity to latch onto you and draft you for what we still have a lap and a half of racing left? If I'm Ricky Russell, I'm going to sit behind for at least a half a lap before I even think about it. It's going to be well after the white flag before I even consider making a pass. Yeah, the only thing there that Ricky got to be thinking about too is when he if he catches him fairly quickly and you can judge from body language if he gets behind trevor and he sees trevor sure riding good but not aggressive then he can read into that like hey he's a little tired i you know i'm gonna you know maybe he gets around him and gives it everything he's got for two three miles see if he can break him yeah and that's a that's a gamble you take you know yeah. if, if you if you take your shot but then if bollinger is able to latch on then suddenly ricky's the one max effort you know 100 percent max heart rate gasping for air pumping up you know feeling tight just that extra abuse that it takes on your body when you're hitting the bumps that much harder you're slamming the ruts and uh you know I, i've done that so many times where you catch a guy and you think like oh he's worn out his elbows are dropped especially if it's on the last lap and you're like i've got more in the tank you make the pass you sprint away a little bit the next thing you know you catch some lappers that guy catches back up and then he does the same thing to you that you just did to him and at that point again you have to gauge whether or not you think you can make the pass and pull away or if it's just a pass for position i don't feel it's worth it unless you can make the pass and actually open a gap yeah i think you're right there and but you know ricky's it'd be neat to be inside their helmet know what they're thinking know their condition because yeah if ricky's feeling it and he goes yeah i got a lap and a half in me no problem i can go 100 percent and uh, then, yeah, and you get the, and the big thing, too, is opportunity. If uh, the situation, you know, they get into Lapper or Trevor just happens to pick a bad line for some odd reason, uh, you know, then you don't know. Or Trevor's, you know, he's, like I said, he could be just sitting out there and it's like, hey, I'm in front. you got to get around me. You might catch me, but getting around him, that's another issue, too. So that's a thing, too. And, and Ricky, he can judge that if, you know, he sits on him for a little while and watches what he's doing and, and kind of needs to judge him. And again, that's where the, the mental thing, you know, like a Kale Russell was just so strong at that. He he would know when to pull the trigger just like nine just, times out of ten. Just as we went away there, that was our leader of the XC2 class, the 198 Tealy Energy Racing. 
KTM of Liam Draper. Shout out to him. Again, a hometown boy, hometown via <laughs> New Zealand, but uh, lives here uh, right in the Waynesburg, Pennsylvania area. I'm sure he's got a lot of friends and family and team members here today cheering him on. Uh, would be huge for him to grab that win here today, obviously. And didn't see a trailer behind him. Last we had seen, he had opened up just a little bit of a gap over the 19 of Ryder Lafferty and the 178, the points leader of Linden Snodgrass. Yeah. Yeah, Ryder's been having some some really strong events here lately. You know, he won the National Enduro. I know at the last GNCC, he uh, got a horrible start, but worked his way up to fourth at the end of the day. So he's uh, he's been riding strong here lately too. So see what pans out in the XC2 class. What we're seeing on screen is the battle for the lead. That is Trevor Bollinger out front, right behind him, the 212 of Ricky Russell, folks. Two hours and 20 minutes plus into this one, and this is how close the battle for the lead continues to be. It's been like this all day long. We've seen a few times where guys were able to stretch it out. 16 seconds, the biggest gap we've seen all day, and we were acting like at that point the race was over. Well, what do you know? <laughs> it inched right back up to each other, and they are right now battling basically wheel to wheel. There you see it on screen. The rider you see in front is the 739 of Bollinger. The rider behind him, the 212 of Ricky Russell. Both of these guys badly wanting to grab the win here today the Mason Dixon. Yeah, we've had some great racing here today, you know, even in the uh, the XC3 class. Brody Johnson was back for a while, and he just has recently got around Zach Hayes, who's been really consistent all year, and, and uh, so that's been an interesting class, too, all year. I, and I gotta tell you, this track, as we watch this battle on screen, there is Bollinger, there is Russell. Don't think we'll see any moves for the lead in these field sections, but uh, again, I don't think Ricky also probably wants to get too close to uh, Trevor Bollinger, because that uh, 350 Husqvarna of uh, uh, Trevor Bollinger is gonna be throwing some softball-sized rocks off the rear wheel. Those do not feel good. This would not be a track, going back to that XC3 uh, 125 Pro Class, not a track that I would like to ride on a 125. Um, you know, it, there are some guys that have done it very well, but those bikes are not exactly known for their grip, uh, and this track has a lot of slick sections for sure. And it's also got a lot of stop and start stuff. You have a lot of downhills where you get to the bottom and you immediately do a 180 and go right back up. So. You know, the key to a 125, as Shane Watts showed us when he was winning overalls on one, was just the corner speed and just keep your momentum. And a track like today, like I said, with slippery dirt and a lot of change in direction is, is tough to do. So my hat's off to those guys in that XC3 class. They are putting it down today. Well, as we check things out, as uh, we said, two hours and 20 minutes plus into this race, we are now around 10 minutes out from what we expect to see a white flag, actually yeah, almost 224, working on 224 on time right now. So that puts us in the neighborhood of about eight minutes uh, before we come to, uh, should be near the finish line and a white flag. So, um, you know, with the intensities that we've already seen, um, and I, I have to say I'm quite impressed, even as we head into the three hour mark, I, I, we're not seeing that fade away. We're seeing intensity levels rise this time around rather than talking about uh, you know, the dreaded third hour and people are starting to fade away and we're not even seeing that on this, at least in these front five runners anyway. Yeah, but it is interesting uh, with Grant Baylor. He's kind of made a big move and Josh Schrank kind of coming with him. So, you know, I don't think they'll affect the first two positions, but that third spot yeah, I think is really up for grabs. And, and, you know, I've talked about it, Jordan Ashburn and, you know, Trevor Bollinger, this is when, man, they really got to make something happen. And it's cool, too, because these last three tracks before the break, you know, have all been really diverse. You know, the John Penton was muddy and slick and really technical. This one's a little bit faster, hammer chisel type deal. And then we've got Snowshoe, which is uh, 180 degree back to the technical side. So and, uh, and go back as far as uh, Crawfordsville yeah. at Ironman at the uh, Hoosier GNCC. Yeah. It was a unique and a little different than these races as well. Yeah, and it's really mixed up our groups because we all know every rider has their strengths and their weaknesses. You know, unless you're a Uha Salman, a Caleb Russell, Rodney right. Smith type of guy. But uh, but in the group we have now, it, you know, we all know each guy because we've been talking during the break like Snowshoe, who we got our money on there. You know, who we think is going to do do what. Uh, and then today is, like I said, a little bit more faster, quicker track. But, uh, still some technical stuff out there, but, uh, but definitely different than what we had two weeks ago. You know, and we, we keep talking so much about the championship battle, and obviously uh, both Jordan Ashburn and Trevor Bollinger very much in the thick of that. Another rider, you know, um, Craig DeLong sitting fourth as they run another rider that could throw his hat in that ring. He is only, uh, as they run, he's 
uh, 18 points behind Trevor Bollinger, who is in turn nine points behind Jordan Ashburn. But what really killed Craig was that last round, 16th overall. You know, um, obviously Jordan with that third place kind of catapulted himself, I believe prior to that race was was back in the fifth place spot or fourth and and all the way up uh was able you know with bollinger finishing 10th and and uh him finishing third i mean that's a big swing in the points right there um so again today all three of those guys up within the top five and you know one bad race anything could change for any of those three at the moment uh, but they are still trailing ben kelly by uh 40 it was 44 points coming in into this weekend was the difference between uh jordan ashburn second and ben kelly still leading the way you know, just from a fan perspective, how cool would or how awesome would it be if, like, Ben were, like, leading this series going into the break, you know, and missing the last three rounds. Oh, man, we have got the leaders coming, and they Look at this, wheel, squaring wheel. him up, looking like he was going to try and make a run. Bollinger a little tentative there with that lapper, and uh, Ricky Russell looking like he wants to run it in there and try to take the lead away. So doesn't look like he's taking my advice. He's not willing to sit back and uh, let Bollinger lead. I think he's going to try every corner. Yes, he is really looking aggressive. So obviously he's seen something with Trevor or he's just feeling it himself. He doesn't care what Trevor's going to do. He thinks he can just do better. And too, from a racer standpoint, you got to love that to a guy that's like, hey, I'm not going to sit on the wheel. I caught you. I'm going around as soon as I can. And maybe, you know, just doing this too. He just like giving Trevor something to think about. Now, Trevor, when he's in the lead, he's okay. This line I'm going to take, but what line is Ricky going to take? Do I need to go to the inside to block Ricky? but the outside line's better, you know? So, you know, maybe Ricky's just doing a little bit of head games here with him, you know, just let him show him a wheel. So, so now Trevor's thinking about where he's gonna ride and where it's Ricky gonna ride. Well, you know, one thing I could say, I think Ricky might have a little more experience riding with the season champion like Caleb Russell. So he might be a little bit in a better position here at this instance in the race. Like I said, just from the experience of racing against uh, Caleb Russell coming down in, in situations like this. However, uh, the young um, and I guess excitement of, of Trevor Bollinger might over uh, supersede that too at the same time, you know, so it's kind of a double edged sword here for Ricky Russell. He's trying maybe to utilize some of that experience, but it might not pay off either. Yeah, because, you know, Trevor, he's one, you know, it's not like, you know, sometimes we talk and we forget how experienced these guys are. I mean, he's been racing for a lot, a lot of years, you know, won an XC2 championship. So he's got experience. He's got knowledge. He knows how to win races, but you know, being in this situation for really the first time is uh, is is going to be be taxing on him. You know, he's going to have to buckle down and and like you said, John, just hit his marks. Just you know, he really needs to focus on riding his race. Don't worry about what Ricky's doing. Just you know, have confidence that what you're doing is 100%. And, and man, they are, they are getting after it. Yeah, it looks Ricky is really really pushing the issue here, trying to get that lead. I don't know if it's that he's tired of eating Trevor's dust, trying, tired of getting roosted, or if he really feels like if he does make this pass, he's going to be able to open up a gap. Bollinger taking a look over, blocking that inside line. At this point, these guys are playing chess at a high rate of speed. They're they're throwing every move, every trick in the book at it. Yeah, you wonder, you know, we don't get to watch every inch of this. Uh, how aggressive is Ricky going? Has, you know, there been some contact made because, you know, two reasons you look back like that. One is like, Oh, is he still there? Or two is like, I can't believe you just did that to me, and I ain't going to stand for it. So, uh, and I don't know how good of friends these guys are. Um, but, uh, you know, they're both known to be really good racers, so I don't expect anything like that. But uh, Ricky is really trying hard right now to get around. So, and hopefully, you know, he doesn't uh, do something that uh, where he actually makes a mistake and gets a little bit too aggressive. So he's got to be careful there as well. Yeah, and the other thing we do have to keep an eye on is how far back is the number three of Jordan Ashburn or potentially the uh, 314 of Grant Baylor. Those are the riders that right. we know. Mark, you mentioned Josh Strang a bit ago. When we did peel away from that shot there at the eight-mile marker, that gap had opened up a good bit on, on Strang. He was no longer there with uh, Grant Baylor uh, for that what would be the third, fourth, fifth place position. Strang was kind of all alone by himself. And actually, DeLong had gotten around him. DeLong was fifth, and Strang was back in sixth and, and a pretty decent little ways behind DeLong. So don't know if he had a crash. Obviously, he could fight his way back up in here at any moment into the top five or be battling for a podium. But uh, right now, it seems like the two-rider battle for lead, and then we got three riders that are kind of in the mix for that final podium's position. 
Yeah, I think with Josh, you know, uh, to John Penton two weeks ago, he was really able to use his skills and his smarts to ride just a fantastic race for this one because he's still coming back from injury. He's not 100%. You know, we have our leaders coming here, and uh, they are still. Bit. Yeah, he gapped him there just a little bit, but uh, nothing to worry about. Uh, we still, I think, have a race going on here. Uh, but, yeah, like you said, that final podium spot, it looks like that's going to be really interesting. And for Jordan Ashburn, this is where Jordan really has to buckle down and you know he can't give up that you know that podium spot he's there still he in there still in third place so he's uh looking strong and, and too when you get that white flag that that oh, there, grants there right grants. there so there's your third and fourth place rider still very much in the thick of the battle for this one and there's another scenario you know ricky russell and, and trevor Holder are racing hard you know the, the, these guys are one you know touching bars and going down away from jordan ashburn and uh and Grant Baylor being right there with him. Now we see Ricky Russell. We do not see Trevor Bollinger. So we talked about them potentially touching bars and one or more of them going down. Have we lost Trevor Bollinger? There he is, Ricky Russell, new leader with a good gap over Trevor Bollinger. Gotta believe in that section there was some some type of miscue by Bollinger or potentially con contact made um, because that is a big gap to have opened up in only about 100 yards of racetrack. And this is what we talked about. Now, there is Bollinger in the second place spot. Only one turn behind him is the number three Magnum One Motorsports rider of uh, Jordan Ashburn in that third place spot and he can now see and as you talked about Mark these are the two that are really really nip and tuck in the points here trying to take that points lead away from Ben Kelly for the championship points and you know when we saw Trevor and Ricky right before the lead change actually Trevor had opened up just a little bit of gap so I'm willing to think that uh, Trevor had a self-inflicted mistake for Ricky to get around him, make up the time he was behind, and plus get that big of a gap. I would agree, and I can tell you, from where we saw him last to where he popped out, um, there's a lot of, it's a kind of an off-camber section where you ride the bank and it's all tree roots. Yep. Could easily see washing the front end there and going down, potentially connected with the lap, but we don't know, we don't have a crystal ball, but uh, absolutely makes sense. There was enough of a gap that I don't think, you know, Ricky could have even been close enough to, to make contact, at least right. what we last saw on camera. So likely an uh, unforced error from Trevor Bollinger, but the good thing is we'll probably hear all about it here in just about another lap. Yep. And now is going to be interesting because, uh, you know, Jordan Ashburn is not that far behind Trevor. And and like I said, with the ride that Trevor had, unfortunately, last week or two weeks ago, kind of had a miss, mishap mid-race, and he dropped back to, what, that 10th position. So that really hurt him in the points because he was one point behind Jordan going into that race. So when you look at big picture, if Jordan can get around Trevor, that's a huge gain for him, you know, looking long term. Sure, and again, it comes back to those points. Ashburn currently sitting in the second place position in points. There was Bollinger. That is still your second place rider. Next up, we'll be watching for the number three, Magna One Motorsports, Husqvarna of Jordan Ashburn, and there he comes around the outside, and we know lurking in the shadows behind him is the Grizzly Bear with his claws out and his teeth out. Grizzly Grant is on the charge trying to get that final podium position. Trevor Bollinger now 14, almost 15 seconds behind Ricky Russell. Ashburn another 11 seconds back in third. Grant Baylor is posted less than two seconds behind Ashburn when they came through the uh, finish line. And there you see the entire crew out there cheering Trevor on. They really want to see him get back up there, get back in the battle with Ricky Russell, and here he is again exiting. That corner's been treacherous this weekend. We talked about it earlier. Yeah, and two, Trevor to me looks like he's not as aggressive as he was about a lap ago. He, he's riding well, but just, uh, you know, I think Ricky, you know, when he was behind him, he saw something. I think that's why he was so aggressive. He, I think he sensed that Trevor is kind of there, and now Trevor's really got to regroup and not let the, you know, because he's still got a great ride going. And he can't let, you know, Ricky getting around him affect him. He's like thinking, oh, there goes my win. You know, he's got, got company coming. Yeah, so, two of them. Yeah. So he's if you got, saw that or not, yeah. but uh, it uh, appears Jordan Ashburn has a trailer in the form of 314 uh, Rev Motorsports Gas Gas of Grant Baylor. He is right there on the group. Yeah, I think that group is going to push forward, and, and we're going to see a three-man battle coming up, I would say, within the next three or four miles. Absolutely. And with only 16 seconds to Ricky Russell, 15 seconds, it is possible that if those three push the pace, we could see a four-rider battle for the win. And again, Ricky Russell out front, 
not able to put, you know gauge his pace and his gap. I'm sure he'll be getting pit boards and updates as much as he can, but he's the guy that's got to move all the lappers first. Once he comes by, the lappers know that they're coming. So, man, 16 seconds seems like a pretty good gap when you're watching on screen, but as you know, Mark, that's one tip over. Yep, but the nice thing for him, this point in the race, the lappers don't usually put up a much of a fight. The worst part is they they get out of the way too easily and they, they just like they hear something they just pull off the side of the track and you might be right in there where they're going so he's got to pay attention there but uh, and i we both know that he's going to get the signals but his pit crew needs to make sure they signal this group as much as they do uh trevor bollinger because i think uh you know they need to let him know that ashburn and, and uh you know baylor are coming so he doesn't relax too much you know because he's got a nice gap he's not going to hear anybody but the way he's riding, he's riding really smooth and looking good. I, I don't see him catching him, but, you know, stranger things have happened. Looks like we may have our XC2 battle there on screen coming the other way. Looked like that might have been the 178 or, yeah, of Lyndon Snodgrass potentially battling with Ryder Lafferty. It was kind of hard to tell from that shot. But uh, we'll see if we can get an update on when those guys checked in or if they have checked in yet uh, at the finish line. You know, it, it's amazing with races like this. You know, you, you tell people the race is three hours long, and to have races this close at the end of the day, it just goes to show you the talent that these guys have and, and the commitment they have because, you know, like I tell everybody, it's this is the easiest part of your, this should be the easiest part of your week here as we see Ricky Russell going by and stuff and, and looking good and, and still charging hard. It, you know, he, he, you can tell when guys, you know, there are certain guys, even if they're super smooth like the U-Haul Salmon and, you can still tell when they're going fast, and Ricky's still got that look like he's... He's on a mission. Yeah, he, he wants this one yeah. bad. He yeah. wants to put the nail in the coffin. And right yeah. now, as the gap looking to continue to open up even yeah. more, it looks like he may have done enough. Still, uh, they're still not even to the three-mile marker yet of a 13-mile course. There's still over 10 miles left, but Trevor Bollinger's still solidly in second. Looking like he's he's got some of that intensity back, uh, but we'll wait and see what is the gap back to the number three of Jordan Ashburn and the 314 of Grant Baylor. Yep. Well, your update on the XC2250 class, Snodgrass in ahead of uh, Ryder Lafferty. They're running one and two now. Draper in the number three spot. Uh, Reba Bosa has not checked in yet, or hadn't checked in. He would have been 10th overall. He was running, though, about a minute, 30 seconds behind those front four, though. We're waiting on the leaders here at the three-mile marker, and uh, we know Ricky Russell is leading the way, uh, and here he is on screen and still pushing the pace, not leaving anything to chance, wanting to keep that gap and open it up even more. 15 seconds is what it was at the finish line, looking like it's opened up even a little bit more now, Mark. Yeah, he's he's been riding a good race. And you know, and I'm sure, you know, cause he was injured earlier too, and he's still come back and he's riding really strong right now is the last run. But you know, two weeks ago at the John Penton, I mean, Josh Schrank put on a clinic and uh, Ricky Russell had the front seat for that clinic. So I'm sure he's still a young kid, even though he's raced a lot. Uh, he learned a lot from Josh last week, and I, I think he probably applied some of today. Oh, here we come, the guy's battling. So they have now gotten around Trevor Bollinger, yep. and that is now your second and third place riders. There is Bollinger in fourth, so that developed quickly. You saw them reeling him in, reeling him in. So now Bollinger off the podium in fourth. Grant Baylor has gotten around, as has Jordan Ashburn. So Ashburn second. Baylor third, Bollinger fourth, though still right on the rear wheel of Baylor. So if he can regroup, kind of catch that draft of those riders, we may see a three rider battle for the final two podium positions. And here is the 342 of Craig DeLong. They're in that fifth place spot. So he has uh, stretched things out over Josh Strang, who, as you mentioned, winning at the last round and uh, really a, a great tactical race from Josh Strang today. Less about kind of line choice you know, throttle yeah. control tactics and just kind of more sprinting. Strang still very fresh back from that broken arm. Yep. A lot of missed time riding, but still a very, very respectable ride for him today. Yep. Currently running in sixth place overall and all day long has been up in the top five and yep. many times very near the podium. There is Ricky on screen, four mile marker. He is, that is a full sprint pace right there, Mark. He's yep. not leaving anything to chance. Yep. And, and you know, we've all been in situations like that. I love that, the attack style that Ricky's riding. I mean, not crazy, but just, being focused and, and you know when you get in a position like this in a race if you can just like race don't like cruise because then that's when you make mistakes i love what i'm seeing out of ricky he's riding so good today 
And you know who else I'm liking right now is Grant Baylor. Because yeah. Grant actually came from the furthest back of all this group. He's So he's been you know chipping away, chipping away. And again, you have that mental thing, I caught him. Yep, and the know? word on Grant is always, the later in the race, the absolutely faster he goes. He's willing to hang it out on that last lap when he shouldn't have anything left, when no one should have anything <laughs> left. But somehow Grant always seems to find a way to find so much speed at the end of these races. You know, you have to wonder what it feels like to be a rider on the last lap whenever you think everything is gone and spent and then all of a sudden Grant Baylor comes charging up behind you like that. Trevor Bollinger is done, folks. Something, don't know if it's a bike issue, a him issue, but he has dropped quite a bit of time in a mile of racetrack and now is falling back into the clutches of his teammate. Pretty confident the next time we see him that we'll see Craig DeLong in fourth and Bollinger in fifth. Something going on either with Rudder and Machine there. Still, phenomenal ride for him today and, and gonna end up being a good point stake for him. Well, I'll tell you what, we got a lot of questions to be answered and a little time to wait to have those questions answered to us. Less than 21 minutes. And of course, we're at the four mile marker. We'll be checking back in at the eight here in just a few. Ricky Russell up front, Jordan Ashburn, Grant Baylor now battling for those final two podium spots. Stick around, GNCC Live continues after this. our reasons to accomplish to work hard we share a common goal to be the best keep fighting put in the work never take the easy way your drive and determination fuels our passion of family values and a homegrown work ethic, Kometic Gaskets seals your machine so you can focus on the finish line. Kometic Gaskets are the competitive standard for racers who demand the very best. Kometic Gaskets are constructed from superior materials designed to perform in the most demanding environment. Whether it's championships on the line or a day in the dirt with friends, professionals and enthusiasts depend on Kometic. Kometic Gaskets sealing championships since 1989. Amsoil runs on freedom and has since 1972. We punish our products firsthand in our world-class laboratories and beyond because some things can't be learned from a test tube. Run with us.
Ben Kelly here, 2021 GNCC champion. Subscribe to Racer X and get yourself a fresh FMF t-shirt. This Racer TV broadcast is brought to you by Specialized. Specialized Turbo E-Bikes. It's you, only faster. And by Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Get ready. And welcome back to GNCC Live from the Parts Unlimited Mason-Dixon GNCC as we take a look back to one year ago in 2021 here at the very same race and check it out uh, it looks like one of the local favorites lane michael got a pretty good jump on it but we also had some uh, favorites from this you're looking at ricky russell and jordan ashburn riding very strongly here in the early part of the race but uh, again another rider that rode well that day and held basically the points lead almost all season last year ben kelly also having a pretty stout ride as well here johnny yeah, a lot of riders up front battling for this one. Ricky Russell obviously killing it today. Ben Kelly, this guy unfortunately not with us this weekend. Your defending champion out with injury, but was putting on a clinic, being chased down by the big boy Baylor. He was coming like a freight train, and uh, when they came into fuel, it was still Ben Kelly leading the way, but Stu Baylor was in hot pursuit. Well, I tell you, it was a good one. Tough break there for the fat, for Thad Duvall. Tough break that day for Ricky Russell as well. And, uh, broken finger. Broken it finger. was nasty. We had that on camera and thing was just hanging there by the meat. I'll tell you, this was another one of those days that we got to see a pretty good matchup between Stu Baylor and Ben Kelly on that day. But, uh, you know, again, that was uh, during that uh, reign of uh, terror that <laughs> Baylor was bringing to the GNCC last year in the hopes for a, a points win by the end of the season and of course uh he was chipping away at it and ended up getting the win but uh we know what happened in the end but man what a great race and some great memories from here just one year ago and again both uh, our uh, uh several key players from last year and this year out and uh unfortunately we don't necessarily get to say the same names but i can't say that we haven't seen the same amount of excitement today this has really been an exciting race it has been and, and i think uh you know, with the, the movement we've had with Ricky Russell, like you said, learning so much two weeks ago with the John Penton, and now with the late charge by Grant Baylor, uh, we've got some excitement because, you know, I can't stress enough, Jordan Ashburn and Trevor Bollinger have so much on the line these three races where, you know, they just got to, you know, like they say, make hay while the sun shines. And here we have Ricky Russell coming through. Just He's just been on point all day, you know, made good decisions, and they're riding extremely well. You know, if you're Ben Kelly at home right now, you're cheering for Ricky Russell. You're cheering for Grant Baylor. You want to see those guys one and two and pushing the, uh, you know, the, the championship contenders, Trevor Bollinger, Jordan Ashburn, Craig DeLong, further back in the points. Uh, and, you know, it's, uh, hey, that's part of the game, man. It's, it's a points game. We know when we line up, we got 13 races. There's 30 points available at each. And uh, right now, but look at this. Grant Baylor has now gotten around Jordan Ashburn and up into the second place spot. So there it's exactly what we were just talking about. Ashburn's still there in third, but the Grizzly has started to open up a gap and uh, looking like he's solidly in that second place spot. And, you know, we have no idea the health of Ben Kelly, if he'll return or, or what's going to happen with him. But it just makes it'll just make for such an exciting summer break to like, you know, people will be asking, will Ben be back? And, and if he does come back, you know, how healthy will he be able? Because he, can he run that pace? Can he last three hours? So, but, uh, you know, the guys right now, they, they don't care about Ben Kelly. All they care about is getting that checkered flag first. And right now, Ricky Russell is doing the best job of that today. And there's what the other thing we talked about. Uh, uh, Craig DeLong has gotten around Trevor Bollinger solidly into that fourth place spot. And we still do not see Trevor Bollinger at the eight mile marker. He is back at least as far as fifth. We know Strang is lurking back there as well in that sixth place ride. Uh, and again, these are valuable points for this championship. So uh, Ashburn has given up a few by losing that spot to Baylor. And oh, look at this. We got a crash here at the bottom of the monster mile but we'll probably wait here and see if it is trevor bollinger still in that fifth place spot or is josh strang able to make the pass and i thought i saw strang go by already i didn't see hmm. 
We're, we're getting word from our producers that uh, Bollinger is motioning to something with his throttle or potentially his wrist uh, could be an, an injury, you know, might have might have banged it or, or jammed it, or it could be the the throttle. Uh, jammed well, I'm sure it. I'm sure it's not a mechanical. It's probably a rider, something wrong with the rider. Hey, here, here he is, right here. So still in the fifth yeah. place spot is Bollinger, uh, still chugging along, but definitely not at full intensity, and uh, as yet does not have any pressure from behind from the 114 of Josh Strang. But uh, we'll continue to watch that as it unfolds, as they come to the finish line here. Uh, and will it still, will he be able to hang on to that fifth place position? Well, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I was kind of joking. If anybody that heard what I said there about, uh, there, there's Josh Strang. I thought I'd seen him go by there a few moments ago. Oh, no, I hadn't seen him go by because Bollinger is just ahead of him there, I guess. But uh, anyway, uh, Trevor, you know, uh, that, that is a tough break for him. And whether it be mechanical, whether it be physical, Regardless, and it may be a combination of both, that is, it's a really hard pill to swallow on a day like today when you have what seemed like with an hour left to go, everything in the bag. You just basically had to get through one more hour at that particular point, and it's not panning out for them, it doesn't appear. Yeah, but in GNCCs, that last hour, that's the money hour, and that's when I was going to allude to it earlier. Today should be your easiest day of the week. If you do your work Monday through Saturday, today's the fun day. And, uh, you know, you hate to see an opportunity like that get away because just by looking at his riding style lately, uh, if he did do something to that wrist, the report that we're getting that he's, he's done something to the wrist, if he jammed it on a track like today because it's a little bit faster, it's going to get dried out, it's getting really choppy and rough. If he does, is he, if he's dealing with a wrist injury, that's going to be really difficult on a track like today. Another new leader in that XC2 Pro Lights class. Now it is Ryder Lafferty taking back over that point position. And second place of Lyndon Snodgrass right on his rear wheel. They have taken that spot away from Liam Draper. Uh, who, oh, we got another rider down on the Monster Mile. Things getting interesting here on the final lap of racing. Riders starting to tire, like you were talking about, uh, as we work toward that three-hour mark in this race. According to timing and scoring, we're somewhere in the neighborhood of about 10 minutes, 8, 10 minutes out from when we would expect to see a checkered flag, Ricky Russell, appearing to be on his way to uh, a win here in the, well, the, his first, I guess, here in the 2022 season. If I'm not mistaken, this is win number two for him, I think, if uh, in his career after winning uh, Snowshoe GNCC. But uh, a big day for him and a good momentum booster. You know, we talked about how, how how much that would do for Trevor Bollinger, how much it would do for Jordan Ashburn to get the win. But even I think the same thing applies to Ricky Russell in this in this instance today. Sure, absolutely. I mean, he may not be in at least as of yet. You know, we don't have a crystal ball, but right. with the way guys are dropping in this class, you know, That's he what might saying. be in the championship hunt at some point. <laughs> but uh, you know, even still, I mean, having. Five years since his last win, which is first win, uh, you know that's a that's a great day for him, and you know he's gonna. This one's gonna feel a little bit extra sweeter when he sw sips that champion champagne on the podium. Well, what it does too, going into uh, coming off of a high like this, the next race is the one race that he did win five years ago, and it is the race that we always like him to be more his style type of race, and it is a race that we've seen him perform extremely well at on more than one occasion. So. Uh, it, it looks as though things are lining up for a perfect storm for Ricky Russell right now. Yeah, and that could be a big points haul because if he got 25 at the John Penton and 30 today and 30 at Snowshoe, whew, that's 85 points, and that's a big chunk of points. Uh, yeah. And, you know, so, yeah, definitely is is going really well for Ricky right now. And, and like we said, we just saw Ryder Lafferty jump into the lead there, and you talk about hearing voices in your helmet. I'm sure he doesn't want to listen to his Uncle Mike, <laughs> eight-time national Euro <laughs> champion, if he get home and winning this thing and loses it on the last lap. So you know he's extra motivated. And he's landed in a great spot on that Coastal team. You know, uh, he's landed a great spot with the Coastal team. You know, Barry Hawk, nobody knows more about winning GNCCs than that guy. So, uh, you know, again, young guys like that, he can rely on his uncle and Barry Hawk to a lot of knowledge there to really help him, you know, learn how to win these races and finish off the season strong. We're getting closer and closer. The miles are ticking off. We are getting ever closer to a waving checkered flag. Ricky Russell leading the way. Trevor Bollinger has now dropped back and on screen showing in second there, has dropped back to the fifth place spot. It is now Grant Baylor in second, Jordan Ashburn in third, Craig DeLong in fourth, and Bollinger back in that fifth place spot with Josh Strang lurking pretty close behind him there in sixth. 
Yeah, this has been, been like I said, a, a great race all day. This last lap kind of got away from a few guys, but it, it's neat to see you know, a guy that Ricky Russell, he's been hurt. You know, he won a race what, four or five years ago. And now, to, you know, so when you win your first race, you obviously think there's more coming. But, uh, but uh, for him to come back and get another win with such a big gap, that, that's got to do a ton for his confidence. And he's been riding extremely well lately. You know, he's had a three race stretch here that the results have been very positive. Tough break for Liam Draper fans. Report is that he's got some issues with his machine and is looking for a toe back to the pits. So that's going to take him out of contention for that. And, uh, and again, hate to speculate on things, but we are hearing that more and more likely a physical ailment for Trevor Bollinger at this particular juncture. Yeah, they're saying, uh, sounds like he may have made contact with something and he's, he's uh, motioning and, and mentioning, given the opportunity that he's got something going on with his hand. So we'll hope it's just uh, a bruise, maybe just some busted up knuckles that, you know, three weeks he'll be back and ready to roll for snowshoe. And obviously, you know, if, if he's had an issue like that, to be able to bring it home in fifth place, you know, that's a pretty solid effort. Uh, granted, you know, he was leading and, and had an opportunity to grab his first win, but still a top five on a day when you're, you're facing challenges is nothing to shake a stick at for sure. Especially against this crew of riders, no doubt about it. They don't make it easy, that's for sure. We are approaching nearly about five minutes, uh, just over five minutes, I think, before we expect to see a checker flag fly. We are waiting on the leaders here coming out of this wood section. And again, what we expect to see would be Ricky Russell coming out. And then we'll wait 20 seconds, maybe as far back as 30. I don't think it's opened up that much, but that battle's still going on between Jordan Ashburn and Grant Baylor for the number two spot. I don't think that one's particularly done yet. And remember when Ricky Russell made the pass for the lead, Bollinger had a little bit of a gap on him. Then the next time we saw him, there was a it was a big swing of like 12 seconds. Yep. So maybe in that section there, that's where Trevor. Yep. We we speculated maybe he made contact with a lap rider, fell down, what happened? So that could be what happened right in that instant that we didn't weren't able to see it in that big lead swing. And and we're hearing hand issue potentially broken hand from the spotters. Um, it, it, if you ever see these guys knuckles after a race, <laughs> you know it's not hard to believe that you know. You, they're out there just dodging trees and you know could be a left rider could be uh is that ricky i believe so that is ricky russell on screen marching ever closer ticking off the mile markers and now he's down to just the final few uh leading the way nobody behind him no pressure from behind got a good gap over grant baylor and uh obviously third place rod oh he takes a look over his shoulder just to make sure and the funny thing is you know ricky's getting pip words that tell him what his gap is and we know it's more than what he would be able to see behind him but it's hard to fight that urge on the last lap especially coming to the finish of just you want to make sure you don't want somebody to sneak up on you. yeah and just watching his posture here in this section he, he's definitely riding at a relaxed pace right now and uh, he's probably thinking about it, and, you know, hearing a couple noises on his bike that, that aren't there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he looks like he's just gonna cruise this thing into the finish and uh, get his second win of his career. Exciting game for Ricky Russell and the Coastal Racing Gas Gas team. Again, a team that's based out of basically at the bottom of the hill here. Uh, we've talked about it before. Uh, unfortunately, Liam Draper, who was leading the way in that XC2 class, we may have lost the lead, but was still in the top three solidly, um, or may have still been leading. We, we just got word, we know he was leading, and then we just got word that he was being towed in. So we don't know if that's what caused him to lose the lead, but uh, nonetheless, Ricky Russell, that Coastal Racing Bicon uh, gas gas team, you know those guys gotta be pumped over there. Denny and the whole crew, Barry Hawk, uh, Doug Whitmer, you know those guys are gonna be very, very excited to see Ricky come across the line with the checkered flag waving, hopefully here in just a few minutes and grab the win. Yeah, and if things stay the same way, Plus, we saw in the XC2, you've got two coastal guys going one and, two. And that would be a first for sure for those guys. Um, you know, they have had, uh, obviously, Johnny Gerard grabbing a lot of wins last year on his way to that championship, but they were never able to, to tie down a, a win in the XC1 class with that coastal team just yet. Ricky Russell so close so many times when they were still the Coastal Racing Husqvarna team. Uh, now, as a Coastal Racing gas guest, this would be their first XC1 win as a team, and what a way to do it if you could back it up with also the XC2 win in addition to to the XC1. You know, you, you hate to see what happened to Ben Kelly. And, you know, we had Caleb Russell retire. But it has really made things interesting because before we kind of knew who was probably going to win. And now things are like wide open. And, <laughs> and I think it really changed the mentality of the racers, too, when they know that, uh, you know, like like when Ricky Carmichael left, everybody got excited because, hey, we're going to have a new winner. Yeah. And I think the GNCCs, this has really opened up some guys and 
you know, giving them some opportunities to shine. And, and Ricky Russell, you'll be in a prime example. There was, that was actually Lucas Statham, Ricky's former mechanic, when he rode for the Ampro Yamaha team. So that really shows the camaraderie here. Yeah. You know, Lucas obviously has uh, Lucas and, and Corey as well. McDonald, uh, they're both very close with Ricky over the years. He spent yeah. much of his time in that uh, South Carolina area there in Traveler's Rest, living, essentially living in his van or living in the bunkhouse there when he first started. Those were That was kind of the first group of guys that took him in. So here we are. 10 years later, and those guys are still on the edge of the track. That's, that's, that's pretty cool. cool. That yep. is. Yeah, with the racing, especially with your mechanic, I mean, you guys spend so much time together, even when things go your way. Oh, and here we have Grant Baylor still in that second place position, and yep. uh, it doesn't seem like he has any heat from Jordan Ashburn behind him. Looks like he was able to shake Ashburn uh, here. Oh, no, that's not Ricky. Uh, there is Ashburn, so still yep. solidly in third, and a great podium day for him. But yep. uh, again, talking about it, the, the, you got 30 points for win, 25 for second. <laughs> off the table of two guys that aren't at least as of yet in the championship points so ben kelly sit at home if you're watching your best friends right now ricky russell and grant baylor you're just hoping those two gas gases make it to the finish line because that's uh you know uh, essentially those extra points that are taken off the table uh jordan ashburn looking like he may have to settle for the 21 points that are available in the uh in the third place spot at the moment and it would be so exciting if ben can come back and and at least compete because it would just the storyline would be awesome and like i said i was with him getting him out of the woods there at the national enduro and man that kid showed me a lot he is one tough customer i mean he didn't complain i couldn't believe how polite he was you know but he just he knew the situation he knew he was going to have to go through a lot to get out of those woods and he just told myself and the medics just just get me out of here i'll yeah. do whatever it takes on my end you guys just get me to the ambulance and and i expect big things out of ben in the future I do want to point out one thing about uh, the consistency of Jordan Ashburn, though, again, he doesn't get the win. These third place points will bring him to within 23 points of the points lead heading into Snowshoe GNCC, which could be very big, especially, you know, all the speculations. I'm assuming that Ben won't be at, at Snowshoe. Uh, definitely no, not. Snowshoe. No, no, no. So, so with that being said, this the, the possibility lurks and looms very brightly right now that Jordan Ashburn could go into with a decent ride even not with a win but a good consistent ride at snowshoe with the points lead heading into the final four rounds and we you know, should see ricky russell coming through the final turns here for the win and there he is he's around the hay bale rodney you take it over this is your gig buddy. well through the final chicanes the revs are up and of course ricky russell the rough and rowdy one pulls it off his second win in gncc racing here at the parts unlimited mason dixon gncc what a great win. if you're ricky russell if you're anybody on that coastal racing team looking like he dropped his bike there might have tried to stew baylor move out i think he is he doing a burnout currently what do we have happening here <laughs> he's pushing the bike he, he might have broken it but that's fine he got the win he knows he's looking oh he did loop it out oh uh, if i was his mechanic i mean ricky rode great today but i would just choke him <laughs> <laughs> oh I, is it don don <laughs> and then we have Grant Baylor. So, man, the Gas Gas guys, they're one, two in the overall oh, today. Oh, right now, buddy. In third, you see him in the background there. Great ride from him. And as you pointed out, you know, the, and there you see Lucas Statham coming in again, one of the Ampro Yamaha mechanics. Uh, good friend of Ricky's throughout many years and can come in. Everybody's coming in. How can you know this guy? Right. Ricky's one of the nicest guys in racing. Such a great story. We don't want to be the dead horse. We've talked about it so much. Driving out from Washington 10 years ago in his van. No money in his checking account. Two broken dirt bikes. Here he is all these years later. A factory rider for the Coastal Racing Gas Gas team and delivering all their trust and all their belief in him with a big win here today at the Mason Dixon GNCC. Yep. Yeah, that was a phenomenal ride by by Ricky and, and he's had a great last month of racing and to top it off like this and to go to Jordan Ashburn there's a guy by the name of Brian Dungey right he won a lot of championships by being on the podium every week so Absolutely. Jordan is definitely gonna gonna make this a, a season to remember yeah, you can't not be stoked for Jordan. He's so consistent, rock solid. You know, and Rodney, it sounds like you've done the math. So he crossed the line. That leaves puts him within 23 points of taking the points lead. Flip side of that coin, 
if Ben Kelly can come back after the summer break, he's only worst case scenario for him if Jordan does win Snowshoe, Ben Kelly's only seven points out of lead still. Yeah. So that, I mean, it just goes to show how dominant he was, but was doesn't mean anything. It's right. what are you today? And today, this guy right here, Ricky Russell, is the man. He grabs the win. Second place, Grant Baylor. Can't say enough about him starting. We, we talked, first lap, we talked about a Rodney Grant riding around back there in eighth. But he's within sight of the riders in front of him. Could be a dangerous day for Grant. And look how close he came to a win today. Absolutely. You, you almost have to wonder one more lap. What would it, what would it have yielded for? Yeah. Ricky doesn't want another lap. No. Yeah. And I'd say that probably Grant would say the same thing at this particular point as uh, there's Josh Strang making his way into the final stretches right now. We're going to check in with... Uh, it looks like our XC2, I think we're waiting on these guys to come in. We've had such a phenomenal battle right between up. these guys today. Oh, the That's yeah. the 178. Here, here comes the battle for the XC2. They're coming into the finish. Looks like Ryder Lafferty leading the way, we think. And there was definitely Snodgrass went through. Don't know if that was Ryder in front of him. If it was, then that is one and two. Uh, so it looks like Ryder Lafferty may hold on to this one. They'll be popping out of the finish line. Chicane's here in a matter of about 10 seconds. So we'll be watching here right now. Was it Lafferty coming through there, or did we see Snodgrass coming out? It was Strang, and then there was another rider behind that could have been rider Lafferty. We'll know in about now. It is. Wow. Oh, this one's not over. This one could get, get dicey here at the end, and rider's going to have to tuck those inside lines and protect it if this close to the finish. Final turn, Ryder Lafferty hammered down and takes the win in the XC2 250 class here at the Mason-Dixon GNCC. And another phenomenal ride by that class and those, those competitors today have given us uh, an outstanding performance. I tell you, what a great day of racing here at the Mason-Dixon GNCC. Let's get the story from Ricky Russell as uh, he is with Mikey Waynes. Hey, thanks, Rodney. Down here with Ricky Russell. Ricky Russell grabbing the win here today in epic fashion. Ricky, talk to us about it. About time, that's all I can say. Uh, we rode good all day. Trevor was putting in heaters. I was trying to stalk him down. He had a little mistake right there going with one to get, go. He fell down. Uh, man, I just knew I needed to do a one-lap sprint and put it all together on that last lap. Even though I had a big crash, I was worried, but then I got pit boards with the gap, so... Man, that feels good. Oh, Ricky, winning a GNCC, incredible, no doubt about it. Um, you've got a reason that this one is a little more of an emotional win. If you're comfortable talking about that, man, tell us why this one means that much more to you. Yeah, my, uh, my best buddy um, back home in Washington passed away this week, and it was way too early. and. Uh, man, he was 35 years old and 34 years old, and yeah, this is for him. I, uh, man, I, I, I had to not think about it too much. This week's been rough. I stayed busy all week, put the work in, and has showed today. And uh, it's for you, buddy. Uh, we'll see you soon. Not hopefully not too soon, but we'll see you eventually. And I hope you're uh, chasing big bulls and bucks in heaven and twisting thr grips and. Uh, Winning races, that's what we're going to keep doing this year, hopefully, for you. So, thanks, man. There you go, an emotional victory for this man right here, Ricky Russell. Water. I tell you, coming off of a, a week like that, it, it's hard. And to, to be able to achieve something like that in your career, especially on the heels of something so tragic, is, is always something special like that. And, and, and like Ricky said, you know, it feels like he felt like his buddy was riding right along with him and and, and probably will be not only last week but uh, in, heading into snowshoe and, and, and the rest of this season. Yeah, it's so tough when you go through something like that and, and obviously to have to come out here and uh, lay it out on the line the way that these guys do. But uh, for Ricky to ride the way he did today obviously shows that uh, he was definitely hyper -focused. All right, down here with Grant Baylor. Grant, man, a P2 finish, a middle-of-the-pack start, man, but you did not give up in this one. Yeah, I think I was, uh, you know, two riders from the back there off the start, so didn't uh, didn't make it easy on myself there in the beginning. But uh, yeah, it was, it was probably one of the hardest tracks to pass on all year long. So uh, definitely had my work cut out for me all day long. Um, I was just steadily, steadily, uh, you know, clicking off positions as the day went on. Um, I just wish I could have got a little better start and uh, maybe could have could have run with Ricky there a little bit, but. Uh, 
all in all, it's an awesome day. I'm, I'm pumped to be up here in second overall and, uh, you know, healthy. Didn't hit the ground but once all day, so it was an awesome day. Hard work paying off, man. How you feeling about Snowshoe in a few weeks? Oh, I'm feeling great about Snowshoe. That's uh, definitely one of my favorite tracks, just being a little more technical and, uh, you know, a little old school and, and uh, slower trails. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. And I, I've had some good results there in the past. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. All right, brother, go get that win. Second place finisher, Grant Baylor. The Grizzly. <laughs> I tell you, man, that guy right there, uh, super impressive for me. Um, just watching uh, his uh, efforts and, you know, I know he's had his struggles. Some of them may be caused by his own, uh, you know, choices sometimes. But uh, I'm just really impressed by his bounce backness, to be honest with you. I mean, he, 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 he in, in adversity, he really seems to dig deep and be able to come and rise above some things. Yeah, he had a heck of a ride today. You look at where he started and, you know, where he, he kept chipping away, chipping away. And, you know, and, and it's neat to see, you know, his drive because all these other guys have real reasons to win and he just wants to win because he likes to win absolutely let's check back in with mikey waynes back down at the uh, finish line and the specialized winner's circle all right down here with third place finisher jordan ashburn man uh jordan this was a tough one middle of the pack really had to dig deep to finish here in the top three yeah for sure man the track was brutal it was uh real skatey and sketchy and uh really hard to pass on like there's virtually nowhere to pass anybody if, unless they made a mistake and uh you know I, had, I got into second there that last lap and uh man just trying to get around the lap or took a wrong line and grant got by me and that was all she wrote man i was i was beat and uh just a uh, tough day at the office tough day at the office he'll take it though your third place finisher jordan ashburn a well, good consistency once again, as we said, pulls him to within 23 points of the points lead with still one more race to go before the summer break and sets the stage for the possibility of a points lead if things go well for him. And I'll tell you, it's uh, a lot of folks still, you know, we, we think we had a fever going today. We're, we're really going to have a fever going in. With that being the the last race for a few months, they're, everybody's going to want to go in and not only establish a lot of points and some dominance, but, but put that explanation point on for that summer break for everybody to think about. You know, Rodney, this coastal racing team's been around for a while, but uh, they haven't had a day like this. I think we're going to get an interview with Mikey right now from our XC2 winner, the coastal racing gas gas of Ryder Lafferty. All right, down here with RFL, Ryder Lafferty, man, taking P1 in the XC2 today. Yeah, pretty good day. Uh, this is like considered my home race. It's closest one I get to New Jersey. And uh, been staying here at the Coastal Shop 15 minutes down the road. So pumped for me and Ricky to get the win, you know. This is a big one being this close to the race and uh, all the Coastal, everybody's here. So. I really wanted to get it done, and I got it done. It was a tough day. Lyndon kept me honest all day, and Liam was riding good in the beginning. But, uh, yeah, I'm stoked. Man, big congratulations to you. How you feeling? We head into Snowshoe in just a few weeks. Great. I love Snowshoe. Favorite track of the year. I love being there, so I'm looking forward to it. There you go, folks. Your winner of the XC2, Ryder Lafferty. Well, I'll tell you, talk about earning your money. <laughs> you definitely earned his paycheck today. And all these writers, I think, did, man. They put on an amazing show for us. Uh, you know, not so much a show for them, but a show for us, for sure, because uh, a lot of entertainment and a lot of uh, great racing today. And uh, Ricky Russell coming out on top with uh, Grant Baylor, moving all the way from seventh place there on lap number one to second by the end. Jordan Ashburn holding steady there. And a top three finish, Craig DeLong. Ryder Lafferty actually coming across the line in fifth after time adjustment. So that last lap, that third hour really changed things up there on the time adjustments. Lafferty and Snodgrass go five and six. And uh, wow, does that mean that Rue Barbosa took third place position there in the XC2 class? So uh, way and, to go. And Rick. Benjamin Herrera in fourth place in that XC2. That has to be a career best for him as well. So uh, pretty impressive things for a lot of riders today. And Trevor Bollinger still holding the pretty steady top 10 finish there after his incidents. What we're, we're hearing could possibly be a broken hand for him. We certainly hope that's not the case, Johnny. But we'll know more in about three weeks. And if you want to keep up to date with everything that is GNCC and find out more, be sure and log on to GNCCRacing.com. And of course, uh, for this right here at uh, 
the Parks Unlimited. Mason Dixon, GNCC, we've had a great time. I want to say thanks to Mark Hyde for making his way in and being a part of the uh, town today. Johnny Gallagher, of course, my uh, cohort, Mr. Mikey Waynes, and, of course, all of Racer TV staff doing an amazing job once again. Uh, we'll see you, I guess, at Snowshoe in a few weeks, everybody. I'm Rodney Tomlin. Have a great day.